All right, here we go. Best Christian rock bands go. Amberlynn. 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 It's like the oh old. yeah 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 yeah. Here's here's mine. Creed. No, they're not Christian. Yeah, they are. Can Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened to him? Did you know he's homeless? Uh, I didn't know he was homeless, but now he went to jail. Oh yeah, what one or the other? I can't remember. That's not the same. That's <laughs> no. not the same. I know that he got, he got into some tough times. Yeah, um, and then they and then they came like and then he went to jail and he came back and then they did, then they reunited for a song and it was like when the rain. Ca- I, I forgot the song. I forgot the song. Uh, Switchfoot. Switchfoot. Switchfoot's Switchfoot. Christian rock. Yeah. S- yes. Switchfoot is. Uh, there, there you dare move. you to move. Yes. This isn't gonna make the podcast. Welcome everyone. I think the fray. To- <laughs> the fray is Christian rock too. The fray, yeah. But. Um, no, none of their songs have like religious. Flyleaf. So. I, I don't know. Pa- I, early I, Paramore. I only know like uh, over my head. I think that's. I think that's the main. The phrase. It's about I God. Have. Is it? I thought it was about <laughs> no, I being stressed. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Hello, um, welcome everyone to the Tony M podcast. I am your host for today, Reno, and I am with Arif. How is everyone doing today? <laughs> Do you ask that rhetorically? Like everybody is in their car listening or, you know. Yes. Did like, you see we had one comment? Good, we had one comment of someone saying like, I was, I paused the episode to say, um, oh. I'm having a great day. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that makes so much sense. I read that comment in like, uh, in a vacuum. And I was like, this comment makes no <laughs> sense. This is so out of context for me. But you're right. Because in episode either one or two, one. I think episode one. Yeah. You were like, yeah. You had a, I would you like made to ask efforts. people. Yeah, yeah, how they're feeling because sometimes people go throughout the day where no one asks them. Do so me how a favor, you, everybody. Are you? If you're watching this or if you're listening to this on YouTube, does Spotify have a comment section? No. I don't know. <laughs> does Apple Music have a comment? Just just drop a little comment. Just say, how, how's your day today? Yeah. Or rank it out of 10. I just wanted to like, I want YouTube to filter the comments because they just see numbers and the, numbers. The, <laughs> it's like 3.5, 4. It's just like a slate of numbers mm-hmm. and we get like, banned for soliciting bots comment comments or something how would you rank your day today so far i honestly i think i'm at so far i think i'm at a 7.5 that's pretty good that's a distinction i think yeah yeah given the fact that i slept at like 3 a.m yesterday absolutely that is like your daily rock star life man like you're like the jack black of malaysia or something like, you think jack black sleeps at 3 a.m yeah that's how he stays so i don't know he seems like a 10 cool. p.m. kind of dude because he exudes so much energy throughout the day. Oh, I just I thought the opposite. I was like, he needs more time to exude the energy, so he needs to sleep at 3 a.m. to get all the energy out. <laughs> I don't know what Jack Black is like outside of his school of rock persona. Like, do you? Isn't that no? Just because his tenacious D persona is his school of rock persona. Oh, oh no, wait. What about um? Have you seen Naturally Naturally? Libre? Yeah, Naturally Libre. <laughs> dude, I come on. Have I? I always do the little reference, and it's like. It's to my friends or like, you know, people I hang out with. I'll do like big hug, little kiss, little <laughs> kiss, you know, small hug. When I mean, he's writing the letter, you know. I, the the part I mostly remember from Natural Libre is when he sings that song about breaking the vows, but not breaking oh, the vows yeah. to, the, to the nun. And he's like, I'm trying to, yeah. I love you, but we can't be together <laughs> unless you want to. We can't break our vows unless you want to. <laughs> It's such a, I, I don't know if that movie holds up, but my, yeah, my, my best friend and I, we would always like talk about that movie and we would like, just, it's just the references, like out of context references, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I think um, it's like, there's something that's like, it's the best. It's like the way he says something about <laughs> maize. I think they're eating corn, right? Oh yeah. Like, corn. It's the best. <laughs> it's, so stupid. it's like, I put Nacho Libre in the same bracket as like, um, what's that? Um, Mike Myers. Um, oh, um, the Austin love Powers. guru. No, the love guru. Oh, the love guru. Like these are just such is, wacky. Is that Mike Myers? Yeah. Did I say Michael Myers? No, no, no you From said Halloween. Mike Myers. Okay. Which but, was the Halloween one? <laughs> I don't know. That's Wait, Michael the, Myers. I thought the love guru was. Is that the one where he goes like Marishka Hargate? Absolutely. It's like... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's like it's, okay. Talking about talking about movies that I feel like would very much not be made in like today's standard. Yeah. Balls of Fury. Do you remember this movie? Oh, if you can't wait. With that, Maggie Q and is like, that that's not Dodgeball. That's um, not Dodgeball. That's not Balls no. of Fury, man. The ping pong movie. 
no. with Christopher Walken. Oh, you got to watch it. And I'm not going to, I'm not an advocate. <laughs> but again, these are just like in the slate of movies that like, yeah, me and my friends used to watch like as, as kids and oh, okay. such quotable, I terrible heard movies. Of it. I know, you know dodge- they're making a dodgeball sequel. Are they? Is it still, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. (laughs) (laughs) I still remember the dance they do, like, coming up to, like, I think it's Ben Stiller's team. Like, oh, Mm. man. Good movies. Good movies. I don't know. The the 2000s was just such a, it was 2000s, right? Just such a wild time for cinema. Like, there are all these, like, strange, like, comedic, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's, like, slapstick or just, like, ridiculous movies that came out and people just, like, still quote it until today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I think we've had this conversation before, but not on the podcast. And I feel like mm-hmm. it's an appropriate time. And for my movie going lovers, I want, is that, is that an appropriate phrase to use? Movie yes. going? Movie going lovers. C- cine- cinephiles? C- cinephiles. It sounds kind of bad, though. Anything yeah. with file sounds bad at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, movie fans. I need you to answer. I need everybody to listen, process this question, and then drop a comment, tweet at us. Give me your your best answer because I feel like this might be a little bit contentious. Mm-hmm. What is the best Adam Sandler movie? Click, <laughs> click. It's, it's the best. It has I everything. It has I don't, everything. What does it have? What does it have? It has um the it's typical. Just, it's not just Adam Sandler. It's Seth Green, right? I don't know Please. anyone in it, but Adam Sandler. Like it has Adam Sandler being Adam Sandler, which is like core. It has the sensitive like ramifications, so it's like ridiculous all the way up to a point, and then you realize the the moral of the story is that like, can we do spoilers for a movie that's been out for like fifteen years? I guess <laughs> like spoilers for Click, everybody. <laughs> like, I mean, the whole the whole premise of the movie is that he gets this controller that can like help him fast forward, slow mo, rewind like points of his life, right? And then he like starts to like fast forward through all the boring parts, like arguing with his wife and like stuff like that. And then the moral of the story is that like like life is meant to be lived like purposefully at every point, whether it's high or low, because then he starts skipping like everything and then like there's no meaning to to life anymore. So like that really meaningful core value is not like not in every Adam Sandler movie. So I, I have to agree. I think his performance in Click is also like uh spoilers for Click, right? But like <laughs> I think he see it's a is it him or his dad? That like is passing away. It's like his dad is passing. I think it was his dad. I think that was one of the things he skipped, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he yeah. fast forwarded so much, he missed his life with his dad. And like yeah. I think he, he, he. It's like out in the rain, and he's like bawling his eyes out. I was like, dude, Adam Sandler is a great flipping actor. You know, yeah. Um, that that part. I think that part. It's like very emotional. Mm-hmm. But Click is not the best Adam Sandler. Like, <laughs> what are you gonna say then? What's, there's what's only the one right thing? answer. There's one. There's only one right answer. Um, is it the one about the ants? The, the what is this a school for ants oh no is that ben stiller what are you talking about oh zoolander sorry that's not adam sandler that is ben stiller that right? is ben zoolander. stiller <laughs> what the heck you know the bit where they look at the diorama and he's i've never like, seen what is, i've never seen zoolander what you don't know it was know? banned in this country you don't know is this a school for ants no like he's I, I can't remember the context but they like tell him we're going to build a school in your name and they bring out the diorama of the school that they're going to build and he's like is this a school for ants <laughs> i i mean sure i could see that i could see that being a good bit i could see that being is a good it, bit. it is the we, best we, bit but we could watch it here because it was banned remember because like i think the plot of zoolander is that they try to like assassinate the malaysian prime minister I think I just blanked that from my mind, but that sounds about right. Yeah, no, like 100%. So therefore, it was never aired here or like it was like so taboo, you know? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So I well, feel like I should watch Zoolander. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I completely missed the, the Prime Minister bit. So. <laughs> the, best, the best Adam Sandler movie is Fifty First First Dates. And I was telling somebody about this the other day. Fifty First Dates literally has everything. It's, That's the one with Amnesia, right? Correct. Yeah, the plot okay. of the movie, and I, this one I don't want to spoil because I really want. Unlike Click, everybody has to see Fifty First Dates. <laughs> but it's like I I, t- I talk about this movie to my friends all the time because it's totally one of those like, it's so funny because the whole point is that he's this player in Hawaii and like he, you know, dates a lot of women, but he's a total sleaze bag, and then he finally finds the one right, mm-hmm. and he goes out on a date with this one girl, and then everything is amazing. Like he falls in love, and then the next day she doesn't remember him. And he's like, "What the hell?" And then apparently, like, yeah, the 
part the premise of the movie that's why, why it's called 50 first dates is because she it's like groundhog day she like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... forgets her memory she restarts her uh-huh. life at a certain date every time so he goes he likes a girl so much that he goes on like you know 50 first dates mm-hmm. but it's beautiful it's super funny um not bilbo baggins <laughs> <laughs> is it sean Astin? is that is that his name like who plays oh uh, who plays mr uh... frodo not much longer oh. mr frodo Sam, Samwise Sam, Gamgee. Sam Wise Sam Gamgee. Gamgee. Not yeah. Bill yeah. Bill yeah. He's in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just it's such a good Drew Barrymore. That it's like it has everything. It's funny. It's sad. It's beautiful. It's got my favorite ending to a film. Oh, what a! If anybody else is disagreeing with me, listening to this, what is your favorite Adam Sandler movie? Because I can can. It's like I definitely not click. Why? No Adam Sandler movie. Click. No Adam Sandler movie can be better than Fifty First Dates. Okay, I mean like. Just from hearing your description, and I do remember the movie being very popular at the time. I feel like that would make a really good visual novel, like, like as in a romance visual novel where you're like, having why does to your repeat. brain think like this? Because it's one of my favorite genres that isn't represented enough in mainstream media. Um, and I, I think it would be a really good plot device. So any any devs listening to this, here's here's your million dollar idea. Make it happen, please. Visual, like the ne- the next Nintendo Direct. It's like. Ba-da-ba-ba. It's like this visual novel, <laughs> heavily inspired by the <laughs> hit <laughs> movie, 50 <laughs> First Dates. <laughs> exactly. exactly. They could even like make the direct, like on put a direct on a loop to, as in like a, it's like a metaphor for the show as well. <laughs> it's a six hour direct. <laughs> and it just keeps showing the same trailer. Uh, we there should be on like comedies. SNL. We should write, we should yeah. write like sketch comedy or something. <laughs> I'm imagining people that are listening to this are not laughing whatsoever. No, <laughs> They're like no, so done with this part of the conversation. Like, it's like a little bit. <laughs> God, Adam Sandler. Oh man, that was what a great else? intro. That was that a great was intro. Great. What else takes you back? Like, because I know we were talking about movies that I guess now movies from like the 2000s or stuff that we watched as kids, and like we, we've discussed this off pod a lot about how much I love Digimon, the first movie, <laughs> and you. I don't know how you actually feel about it because like we I've said it's the best movie of all time and you're like no. Yeah, I think this is where we you know, we always talk about this podcast being like um you know, we pitch this podcast as a podcast about disagreeing with your friends. Yes. And I feel like this is going to be our biggest disagreement. We should rename the podcast the podcast about disagreeing with Arif. Cuz everyone <laughs> likes Digimon the first. You can't dislike Digimon the first movie. When did Digimon the first movie come out? 1999. 99 or 2001 i feel something something around the time i mean like give or take a couple of years i well let me ask you what's your familiarity with digimon before i go on my digimon the first movie spiel the as in the entire franchise or the yeah movie? what are your thoughts on digimon as a franchise um i remember it being darker than pokemon for sure and like you kind of escape the digimon pokemon comparison because they both came out roughly around the same time right it was a lot darker, and I also remember that the characters had actual progression. So this is the TV, the TV series, because like like Ash is Ash until like right now. Ash hasn't changed for like the last thirty plus years. But like in Digimon, the characters actually grow, and it's the and it's those moments that allow the Digimon to grow as well. So I remember it being a lot darker and a lot more like character and narrative driven. The games were a lot more challenging and. Until this day, I haven't finished a lot of the Digimon games I played, but the movie was so fun. I that's like I really really love it. What about you? I think quick stories before I get to the movie is that like yeah, Digimon has always been in the same echelon of Pokemon. It was always Digimon Pokemon growing up, mm-hmm. and then at some point, I think the Digimon property kind of like fell a little bit, and then Pokemon just kept coming. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have so much love for Digimon. It's like I think I sh- t- said this on the first episode of the podcast. I have Digimon World like my copy of Digimon World 1 in my PlayStation 1 like right next to me you know Digimon like, World 1 is so hard Yeah it's so ridiculous I'm, like I'm pretty sure the me- the evolution mechanic is broken I think there's I like love it so much I love it so much I it's, it's one of those games I've I'm like if I had my PlayStation here I would still be playing it today but it's really really hard <laughs> yeah. to finish I remember I would train my Agumon like pushing the boulder 24-7, you know what I mean? And then once he does it successfully, it's like, yatta! And it's like, yes, Agumon. Did you not but have a guidebook? But then he evolves into like a little slime. Dude, speaking of guidebooks, um, I do have the guidebook, actually. I'm trying to I find it. I have the guidebook it. as well. I think my guidebook was a photo was photocopied because like... Oh, really? The, the, the front cover was fine, but on the inside, it was all black and white. Black and white? Some parts were fuzzy. 
Yeah. So I was like, I don't know if like someone had just like photocopied this and they're selling it. I think I paid like 60 bucks at the time, which is like oh quite a God. bit. But like, okay, wait, 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 wait. Explaining Digimon World 1, like yeah. as a game. So it begins, you're like a Pokemon, uh, you're a Digimon tamer, right? You're a Digimon tamer. Yes. You've entered the Digimon world. I think you start off talking to Digimon and a couple of other small, like in training level Digimon. And they're like in this town that's like dead. So the idea is to bring Digimon back to the town, make it more prosperous. And then with each Digimon that comes back, you get more resources. So like, you know, better quality food, um, better quality training and things like that. But ultimately you're supposed to progress like traveling around the Digimon world. And I think eventually you're meant to defeat like, um, is it Myotismon or, or just like someone like the, the elite four of the eve of the evil Digimon? Wait, what are they called? There's vaccine, data, and virus. So the the, the elite for the virus type Pokemon, I think. Uh, Digimon. Oh my god. I'm That's... so not gonna lie to you. You don't remember, do you? I don't think I was smart enough to get that far. So that's what the guidebook is for. It's it's a game. <laughs> okay, so the the pro- the what makes this game really challenging, right? Is that you raise Digimon the same way you do Pokemon, but they have a very finite life. So every day counts. Mm-hmm. And you need to raise your Digimon in a very specific way for them to meet the requirements to evolve into the type that you want. So without the guidebook, like you really have no idea what you're doing. And most of the time, if your Digimon fails to meet any of the requirements, it happens like in your case, or if you get Numemon or you get Sukamon, so like the, the poop, the yeah. poop virus, the poop virus Digimon, because you did if you don't meet any of the requirements. Um, I'm pretty sure I was looking this up. I was like, I'm pretty sure there is like ample documentation of folks being like the evolution mechanic is absolutely broken. Like it's both random. There's like, you can craft it to a certain way, like to get metal Greymon or or War Greymon or whatever, but it's so ridiculously challenging that it almost doesn't make sense that like, it's just, it's like innately in the code where it's like just so hard to evolve your Digimon to what you want it to be. Um, But yeah. Yeah. What I was doing was like, I, I wouldn't, I would just grind the whole time. I wouldn't leave the town until I was able to get like an ultimate level. So you've got, so you start, you have like an egg and then you have the baby in training, rookie cha- champion, ultimate yeah. and then mega. So I think ultimate was, the, was probably the highest you could go in the game, I think. And um, I just wouldn't leave the town. I would just grind all the way until like I was a champ, like until my champion could evolve or if my champion couldn't evolve. I would just like try and kill it as fast as possible. Cause it's like, you gotta like hard reset it. <laughs> Because like it. Oh, you, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a champion level Digimon is not enough to get you to advance far enough to where I wanted to go. So you need to get an ultimate. And once you get an ultimate, it's like, all right, now you got to go on your journey and like, like speed run the journey until the end before they die because they will die in like ten days or something. Yes. Ten days is super fast in Digimon. Yeah, it's like Majora's Mask or something. Yeah. Like the world will implode. I, I just like, I, it's so funny. I'm like trying. I really wish I had the guide, but I found it. It's somewhere in the stack of books behind me. If you all mm-hmm. can see, if you all, if y'all are watching, but like I have that guidebook, and I like I never had it growing up, but my friend mm-hmm. did. And then for some reason, I have his book, but I I can't. For, for some book. reason, you have as in like you know we were probably you know we we're sharing stuff, <laughs> yeah, and like we were yeah, exchanging yeah. stuff. But like so, I really want to go use that guidebook now and play it. But like. I remember Digimon World 1, so much nostalgia, even though I probably haven't gotten past the first, like, mm-hmm. six hours of it. I've just played the first six hours, like, 20 times. Yeah. Digimon World 2, absolute trash. Like, oh, it's so, it's all one, in the right? maze. Yeah, it's all in yeah, a maze. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, basically just, like, a dungeon crawler perpetually. Mm-hmm. Digimon World 3, amazing. And I played this one recently. Oh, I played, like, I play about one. a fourth of it. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a. It's just like this beautiful 16 bit style. You've got like the intro cutscene is so nostalgic to me because mm-hmm. you have the little bear Pokemon, you have Agumon, you have Guillemon. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you have the like, Digimon with the gun. <laughs> is that the one where. The one with the motorbike and the leather jacket and the gun. And it's like, why are you a Digimon? <laughs> like, you, you, do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have the image in my head. But Digimon World 3 is the one where. Do you do a quiz or something where they tell you if you want offensive, defensive, or balanced teams? Yes, I think so. Or it's like three. spirit, like offensive, defensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it's yeah. and then there's like the monkey Digimon as um, one of the starter. I recently yeah. played that like a couple of months back and I didn't finish it. I played like maybe like a quarter way through and mm-hmm. it is a solid RPG. Like it's mm-hmm. beautiful, it's fun, it's wacky. Like Digimon, I know they've tried to bring back Digimon World and I think there's a, iterations of them coming mm-hmm. out. But uh, I just, so much nostalgia for that era of Digimon. Yeah, 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 um, for sure. Digimon card, like I remember getting Digimon cards. Oh, I played Digimon. I played a Digimon card game as well. I think. 
Those are those are PlayStation. Oh my cool. God! Yes, yeah, I was talking about the physical cards, but yes, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking yes, about. Yes, the yes, Digimon exactly, card yeah. game card. Digimon card game. game. Why do we always talk about card games? We don't. Yeah, we always go back. But these, no, but these conversations just unlock like memories I've forgotten about my childhood, especially yeah. Digimon. Yeah, I remember it was yeah. Pokemon TCG, which was teased at the Nintendo Direct that's coming um, on the mm-hmm. Game Boy, which is a mm-hmm. really good, that was a really good game. But then, yeah, the Digimon card game where I was like, I saw somebody stream it the other day and it's, the UI still makes no sense to me. And I don't know how I played that game, but it is like a championship tournament, I think, where mm-hmm. I still don't understand the mechanics of Digimon cards, like yeah. the Digimon card game. Um, but yeah, I think like I love Digimon. I remember I used to watch Digimon 02 with my friend. Digimon when 02, would... as in the one with um, Davis. As yeah, the, main... the one with Davis. Davis. And like basically, like you said, Kyrie. the characters actually grow up. So you have yeah. Kyrie. Kyrie is all uh... grown up. She's so pretty. TK's grown up. He's yeah, so TK's hot. grown yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> he has a little bucket hat. You know yeah, bucket I mean? hat, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I love. I like there's like a respect to Digimon where like they it is more mature. They do grow up. Mm-hmm. So I, I do love it. But I remember like, yeah, I just I have so much fond memories yeah. of Digimon. Um, until I rewatched Digimon, the first movie, for the first time in a while. A and years back. And boy, let me tell you, everybody, if you think Digimon, the first movie, is a good movie, specifically the English dub. The English dub makes it good. It's, the, it's an no. example of English dub that works. It no, is. the English dub is a slap in the face to people. Like, it is obscene how much they, like, actively ruin um, the arts and make it something so satirical. Uh, but how do you not? I'm, oh, I've never seen it in Japanese, so I don't know what the original intent was. But it was. I, I'm I'm like shocked. I'm like shocked. Like how, <laughs> how you could find offense in like one of the greatest like, I don't know, anime. The greatest movies, movies of all and, time. And one of the greatest anime movies in a dub language. Like it, it's for me. It's like the best. It's the best example of good dub. Oh my god! You're obscene. You need to rewatch the English dub to Digimon. It's so funny. It it's is so funny, funny. But it's, I think, funny to the point where I think, like, they're completely disrespecting the source material. But how do you know what the source like. material is? Did you You're watch right. it in Japanese? Did you watch, watch it in Japanese? Japanese? But it's like, so the history about Digimon, the first movie, and somebody mm-hmm. needs to look this up as well, right? But if I'm not mistaken, Digimon actually had, like, three different movies or two different three movies. three movies stitched into one for the Western audience. Exactly. And they completely, like, rewove the interlinked interlinkedness of those Mm -hmm. films and they basically crafted a new story which like the pacing is just so weird and like the story doesn't really make sense or whatever but i guess it like comes together ish Mm -hmm. but it's just so haphazardly cut and i I don't mind that that's fine right Mm -hmm. but it's more so the voice acting like i i tried to show this to you earlier just as proof but there's a scene in digimon the first Mm -hmm. movie where um it's one of the like antagonists of the film that's housing terriermon Mm-hmm. Um, and then Davis from Digimon 02. Yep. And they're having this beautiful heart to heart. And it's like, it's about backstory. It's about like why the Digimon is evil and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And then randomly, Davis just starts to cry at the tree, just like out of nowhere. And then mm-hmm. a second later, he's like, Are you okay? And it's like, Yeah, I'm good. And I was like, wow, that was quick. And but it's just such that's, a But that's awkward... what they do. That's it's what they a... do in cartoons. I refuse to believe. It seems totally like one of those things where it's like, man, we have this source material of anime and he's crying and we need to shorten this. So, so what? No, boring. what? Ex- gotta, like, so do you think the it. crying was supposed to be longer and they cut it short? I, I 100% think so. I think it's like supposed to be an emotional proper scene. No, Davis is a clown. Like... Davis has always been a clown. <laughs> like Davis is like a clone copy of Ty. That's why Ty likes him so much. Yeah. Because they're both hot headed, dumb, but like, to, but like, kind to a fault, kind of like leaders of the pack, right? So I I, yeah. I I don't know. Like I understand what you're saying, but I feel like it's very in line with like the with who he is as a person. <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Um, uh, but it's the it's the you. I mean, we were talking about this earlier as well. It's like the dialogue from the mom is just so absurd because she cooks a lot of meals in the first mm-hmm. part of the Digimon movie, and the meals that she cooks are just like they're a joke. They're like, yeah, that's that's the joke. She's a bad chef. But they're things that don't make sense. <laughs> like it's so weird. I feel like it's got to be mistranslation. No, uh, no, I don't think so. We need to look this up. We need to no, watch. No, because Digimon like, why? Okay, so okay, so firstly, I feel like you're you're picking at really like pedantic parts that don't even talk about <laughs> Digimon. You're yeah, like, yeah. They, they're like Ty's mom doesn't cook well. Um, but secondly, like the whole thing is a bit because it accumulates at the end well not the end but like at a really important point where they need everyone to fight the digimon in the digital world but izzy can't because he's having a stomach ache from what 
ties my mom cooked. And like, it, it's a build up, you know, it doesn't make sense if she cooks well and then suddenly he has a stomach ache, right? It's like, gradually he eats her crap food every day, every day. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. he thinks it's healthy. And then one day he's like, oh, stomach ache. And it's like such a stupid, it's a stupid bit, but it's also like, oh, I can't save the world because I need to go to the bathroom, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I guess you're right. I think we, I, I definitely need to watch it in Japanese to like understand it. But I just remember watching it a couple of years ago and I was like, there is zero percent this is real. It's as if like a Hollywood exec was just like, we've got these three movies. We got to stitch them together. We got to like poke fun at it because the audience probably doesn't understand anime right now. You know what I mean? And just like mm-hmm. make it hyper obscene. Um, but all, all said and done, like despite how weird and what a fascinating case study of a stitched together movie it is. I love Digimon the first movie. I have so it's much so fun. for it. It's so good. I think um I also think I guess at that t- at that age, like, you know, if like weird stuff happens, if a movie gets if three movies get stitched again to one, you're like ten years old, you're like, this is fine. It's yeah. more t- it's more airtime for the Digimon I like, so you just kinda tolerate it. So maybe I do need to rewatch it as well. But I did like I mean it is very the dub is very sort of like Americanized. So like the 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 soundtrack is like Oh Smash my god! Mouth. Smash Mouth, Smash Mouth, is bare it? naked, bare ladies. naked ladies. Oh my god! But it made it. I don't know. It just made it really exciting. I feel, and yeah. like probably at that time, at least even in Malaysia, it's kind of like a blend of like the American music we hear on the radio and then like anime that we watch in day to day life, which I thought was really funny. Um, and yeah. I D- thought there's one, a Digimon what... dancing to All Star. Is that is is that is, right? there... is it All Star or is it like what's the Smash Mouth song? The Smash Mouth is all stars, and one yeah, week yeah. is the bare naked ladies one. But I thought Correct. one week was really was really well placed because it's the bit where Ty is trying to send a, an apology note yeah, to Yeah, 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 yeah. And like it just never makes oh. it, and she just gets mad at him the whole time. And it's like if it that that was really funny because it's like if she would just like forgive him, if he would just contact her, they would have this extra person who could really help them save the world. But yeah. because like. Like she she makes it right to his doorstep and she's like stupid tie and then yeah. it goes home. Oh. <laughs> it's like she. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I just yeah. think it's so funny that you see that like you know evil Digimon. Like I think it's towards the end of the movie. He's just like swinging and dancing, and it's like oh yeah, a Smash oh Mouth yeah, yeah. At the end, I don't I don't know if it was a Smash Mouth, but he does dance. Maybe at the you're end right. To yeah. something else. I okay. It's such I, a weird movie. Come on, this is like not a normal. Like you have to acknowledge this is not a normal movie. Can we just whatsoever. talk what the movie is about? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, we should. So for those that three, have never seen the Digimon movie, three movies stitched together in different timelines, right? So the first part begins with Tai and Kairi. So Tai and Kairi are part of the original generation, but I think they're like four years old or something. Mm-hmm. And Ka- and Kairi, the younger sister, she's narrating, I think, and she's like, "This is the first time we interacted with Digimon," which is kind of like a surprising twist because it's like I don't know if, if the movie is meant to be canon or not because in the series, of course, the first time they they meet Digimon is like at summer camp at mm-hmm. uh, I think primary school or middle school age. But so Kairi is saying the first time we met Digimon was when she was like two or something, and then there's this whole like where they meet Agumon, they kind of like he evolves a bit and he has like a big fight. I'm trying not to do spoilers but i mean it's a pretty old movie and then the second part is i think a four year or an eight year time skip right um and it's got ty and i think they've already had their it's it's kind of like after season one so all of his friends all know about digimon they've, they've all they all know that they're digidestin but they're kind of like living life back in japan and um realizing there's like a virus on the internet and trying to save the world again um but with like comedy of errors like not everyone is available people have going on summer summer camp do you remember um mimi yeah, yeah, yeah like like i think izzy like tried to call her and she's like she's... i'm in hawaii exactly like, oh my god I wish you yes. were here. yep yep, yep. <laughs> it's like mimi i think i think she's like uh leave a very short message after the tone it's like beep mimi and it like beeps again <laughs> like that. There's a this is so I know you're doing the plot and I know you're sharing, mm-hmm. but there's this one scene where I think it's like Matt is like in a oh in his like family's barber shop. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like they're cutting hair. And this like this for some reason it's in, in etched in my mind. But it's like yeah. I think a phone call comes or something, or like something happens yes. on the news, and the guy's like cutting this other dude's hair, and it's like, yeah. hey man, you almost cut my ear off. Yeah, right? yeah. It's such a random call. I think it's like that part where like um Ty calls the household and Matt's grandmother picks up and he's like, Hey, it's Ty, and it's like you're selling time. Yeah. <laughs> no, my name is Ty. 
<laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah digimon the first movie is peak comedy man peak comedy I, that's why i think it's obscene and then obscene. like i think ty's like matt like you gotta get an internet connection right away and it's like ty in my grandma's hometown the the closest thing we have to the internet is like an egg timer or something <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, but so, I will say before you get to that that part, like the first mm-hmm. part of the Digimon movie, uh, yeah. directed by Mamoru Hosada. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, if I don't know, and this is what I've been told because I've never seen Summer Wars. But yeah, oh, you never seen Summer Wars? Mm-hmm. Nope. I you know Wolf Children's one of my favorite films by him. I think I saw Boy and the Beast in the theater. We saw mm-hmm. Belle last year Belle. and year before. Yeah, Girl Who Lived Through Time. Um, but Summer Wars apparently is basically just Digimon the first movie. Yeah, it is. It is. I I think I need to rewatch that. I actually really didn't like it as a kid. Summer Wars um, or Digimon? Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like Summer Wars because because it was like Digimon, but not quite. It was mm. and anyway, that's that's for another yes, yes, another yes. episode. Um, so that happens, and then the final arc is I think present day. So Kari is like at a high school age, and then the OG Digi Destin are all I think like college students. Like Matt's in the band ties being Thai, that sort of thing and they're still sort of battling remnants of the virus from four years ago it's it's kind of like affected another digimon and another digidestin from like america i think i think willis is from new york or something mm-hmm. and then they're trying to like meet him and then this whole like friendship arc of like trying to like make sure he doesn't feel alone and things like that and yeah I think, so, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I feel like you have a little bit better knowledge, but I remember when I rewatched this, I didn't realize that the plot is actually super contemporary. So essentially, like, the virus is a Digimon that mm-hmm. hacked into, like, global security systems, mm-hmm. and it's essentially trying to set off, a nu- not a nuclear weapon, but, like, missiles to hit Japan. Is that is that correct? Or like, Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's right. That's right. It's, um, I think his name is Dia Boromon. Dia Boromon, yeah. He's the one from the second arc, I think, and he's trying to set off um the the missiles but i think he's also he's like looking for someone i think he's looking for for willis i think that was yeah yeah that's how it happens so he i think willis had twin digimon and he yes. wanted more because he's like this lonely child and he tried to organically uh not organically like um create one let's see opposite of organic synthetically <laughs> yes um and then he creates this diaboromon and so he's looking for him and that's why he's all over the place like crawling around and like messing up the internet but it's yeah. such a cool depiction of the internet i think that's what was I so agree. fascinating i, I still yeah. think it holds up and i think that's why i like i don't know if um, amara hasada did that one i know he did the, the intro the mm-hmm. one when ty and kari were very small but mm-hmm. it's uh, a lot of hasada's films are just beautiful depictions of the internet like with bell it's like yes contemporary yes. internet streaming like mmos mm-hmm. and then obviously with um yeah like digimon it's just crawling around and going into different like mm-hmm. pockets of the internet or losing uh, to me it was the cybersecurity aspect it's like oh it totally makes sense that like an existential threat from the digital world is one mm-hmm. that could hack computer systems like that's such a contemporary concept and one that i for, i didn't realize as a kid but mm-hmm. i was like this is actually a really good villain kind of like story you know yeah um yeah yeah it's just and and they're like Dia Boromon has like this concept of time. So it's all about a ticking mm-hmm. time bomb, literally. Yeah, yeah. So I guess like that's a big effort. I, I just think, yeah, it's, it's such a cool movie. It's very cool. Um, and I think Digimon does differ a lot from Pokemon. Once you like peel away the layers of just like, oh, like, you know, kids who raise monsters, like Digimon definitely leans more into this sort of like cyber aspect, whereas Pokemon is more about like, I don't know, more happy camping kind of journey to, to I don't know, like it, it's very, it has very like, I, when I think of Pokemon, I think, like, they're always in the forest somewhere. They're always in Viridian Forest for some reason. Yeah. But with Digimon, they're, like, yeah, like, hacking into cyberspace and things like that. So it's very cool. I definitely need to rewatch it, though. Yeah, I think we need to rewatch Digimon, mm-hmm. the first movie. Yeah, but I, I just, I really can't, like, end this segment by saying it is still such a weird movie. It's so good. It's so nostalgic. It's so weirdly beautiful, but it's so corny. It's hilarious. It is such a weird movie. The splicing of the three movies, watching it now with, like, a fully developed brain. Mm-hmm. is so odd it is so violently odd like again if you i just need anybody who's like consuming this like if you want to watch what a weird western hollywood kind of decision kind of, i don't know like taking mm. anime and piecing it together just as a mm-hmm. case study just watch it it's so it's so weird but also jam out to like ska music in the in the movie yeah. it's, it's really good as well i don't know if you had this in your copy of digimon but the one that i watched as a kid had like 
a bit before the movie started and it was like this Nickelodeon character called Angela Anaconda. She's like this. It's like, I don't know, this, um, she, it's like a 15 minute bit and she's like going to the movie and she's like excited to watch Digimon and then they, they turn her into Ty. It's really weird. You're going to have to look Never this up. Seen Maybe this we're going to have to put this up. Like she, she was like one of those like skit shows on Nickelodeon where I think mm-hmm. it's like a real person's face like interposed onto like a cartoon body. It was, it was kind of weird like that. But um, yeah, that I think that's that was also probably like, let's really package this for the American audience by wow. introducing this random character. Yeah, that was that was in my VCD of Digimon. Wow, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, all right, I'll I'll share I'll we'll share pics or links <laughs> or something like that. I'm pretty sure I didn't make that up. Oh, I hope so. I really hope so. Yeah. Jeez. Damn. I have nothing else to say about the Digimon movie. I just <laughs> well, need to, I just need you to acknowledge that it's a weird movie. I think it. Oh my god, I think it's weird. Because your love for Digimon is like obscene, and like I respect you for it. But like, I need you to acknowledge that it is a very weird. Movie. It's weird, but it's so memorable. And like, no other Digimon series besides the original series and this movie has has like stayed with me. Like I've tried so like I've tried mm. Digimon Try. I've tried all the different other remakes oh. I've had on Netflix and things like that. I just it didn't it didn't do it for me. The same ha, way that have you not seen was. the 20th anniversary one? Not try. I, There's a movie that came out that was like for the 20th anniversary. I think I saw a bit of that. I didn't finish it. Oh my God. You, I like, I can't, this is, forget the podcast, everybody. This is just <laughs> me talking to Reno. As somebody who loves Digimon, you have to finish that movie. Like okay. specifically the last like, you know, 40 minutes or so. You have to watch it. And I don't want to spoil it to you, but if if you, if, you know, if, Y'all have seen it. You know what I'm talking about. You just have mm-hmm. to watch the last 40 minutes of that movie. Okay, okay, okay. I do. I don't I do even know what it's called. I, yeah, the, the song. Oh my god, the song. The song. Because uh, in the Western releases, they had like um, the like corny Digimon sing it, songs. Sing it, sing it, sing it. No, I'm not gonna sing it. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing it. Yeah, uh, we, we we got shortchanged. We got shortchanged. Yeah, actually, like, I such a good song. I watched Digimon in Malaysia in Malay dub. Have you ever really? Yes. I know last episode I brought up the Filipino dub for Digimon. Mm. Why wow, we talk about Digimon every episode, huh? I think Digimon Malay dub. I think so. The the cast of the Digimon there's like maybe like what eight of them or something, right? Not including their their Digimon. I think the Malay dub was voiced by two people, like a female <laughs> voice and a male <laughs> voice. And it's like really when they evolve. Like all I remember is when they evolve. It's like the most like monotonous like. Agumon, Bertukar. <laughs> it's like, it's like I actually Digivolve. vaguely remember this. I vaguely remember this. Like, yeah. That's how they translate Digivolve, like Bertukar, like change. Like Agumon. Like I guess in Japanese it it's just sense. like Henko, like change or some Henshin or something like that. But like it's just really funny. It's just like flat. And then like a girl voice comes out and it's just it's the same, it's the same two people talking. Yeah. It's just like voicing. It must be tough work though. Like pretend, pretend you- you're like six mm-hmm. different people. We need to hit up our voice actor friends here in Malaysia <laughs> and find the folks find that did. Like, the, the do you think we dog. could? I will like actively tweet out. It's like I need somebody to find who did the Malay yeah. Digimon dub. And wherever you are in the world, like whether it be Southeast Asia or like where to find your local Digimon dub representatives, yeah. you know, we just need to know those. We need stories. answers. What are their favorite Digimon? <laughs> do, <laughs> do they think Digimon the first movie is a good movie or not? And tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of cartoons, um, or I guess cartoon adjacent, you've been playing Hi Fi Rush, haven't you? I have it. Oh my God, what a perfect transition. That was actually a beautiful segue because Hi Fi Rush, uh, a game by Tango, Tango, uh, oh my God, I'm butchering it. Tango Software? Tango, Tango Works. Tango Works. Beth- I'm thinking of Bethesda, <laughs> Bethesda Softworks. Yeah. Um, yeah, it reminds me a lot of a Saturday morning ca- cartoon. Yeah, um, I think that's a lot of the, a lot of the feedback people have been giving but why don't you do can you do like a brief overview or like what's the game about you know i'm honestly terrified of this because you've done it for the past like three episodes of the podcast and i've <laughs> never done the proper like you know what is this game kind of a scenario mm-hmm. but i'm gonna i'm gonna try and you can correct me but uh essentially hi-fi rush it was announced during the xbox developer showcase earlier uh, this uh like in the past like 30 days or so mm-hmm. um and it's so unlike the previous games of the studio and it's one of those games where it's like super poppy. Basically, the concept of the game is that you play as this very Digimon-like, you know, uh, protagonist who gets uh, an MP3 attached to his 
or, or like a little Walkman, a little like music device attached mm-hmm. to his body, because this there's a world where uh, you can get like robotic body augmentations, mm-hmm. and the whole game is about taking down this corporation that's giving body augmentations to the world because of some evil nefarious plot. But the mm-hmm. but the fascinating concept about the game is that everything revolves around music, so every combo, every you know movement. Um, bosses all of it revolves around timing and music in the game so it's like a beautiful 3d plat action platform adventure game surrounded by music mm-hmm. um and again like it's colorful it's poppy it's got a great soundtrack it's really fun it's got some rpg elements um and it just feels like a saturday morning cartoon because the way that it's animated and i'm sure y'all have seen it and we could pull up some visuals here it's mm-hmm. like just literally a saturday morning cartoon and like you're playing through a saturday morning cartoon and it's um and it's amazing Mm-hmm. um what what else what else is like notable about the game as like a preface i think the i mean the saturday morning cartoon thing is something that a lot of people have said and it really like kind of like hints at like nostalgia for for many of us and it is interesting so so chai who is the main character he is very much like yeah like a, a digi destined or something i actually thought he reminded me of people like i don't know if you remember danny phantom which was on yeah, Nickelodeon, yeah. jake long which was on digi uh so was on disney channel always like that sort of male character who has his heart in the right place but he kind of just like does like lame puns and then like trips over his big shoes things like that <laughs> and then you've got like pepper uh, peppermint who's the girl who kind of like helps him he's sort of like the brains behind the operation at least as far as i've played and she's more like put together she's like very hard on him you know like kind of like cracks the whip uh, at his like fumblings and it reminds me of like you know like things like Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable you know that kind of dynamic and I think that's why a lot of people feel very like it's very similar to cartoons and and it's great because like when you watch some of these cartoons as kids you're like wow I wish I could be in that world and this game allows you to do that you're actually in the in the cartoon world you're actually controlling the main character and and all of that and I think that's that, that part of it it was really well done. Yeah, you know what? It, it's also, and I don't mean this as a diss whatsoever, but if this game came out when I was like 10 to 13 years old, mm-hmm. it would have been like one of my favorite games of all time, I think. Yeah. Because it reminds me so much. It's it's as if this game is a PS2 kind of era game mm-hmm. made in 2023. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much of it. It's like whether it be the cutscenes, the colors, the type of gameplay, um, it just reminds me so much of that era. I think like, uh, and this is like some weird references, but I remember I noted down, I was like, it reminds me like Teen Titans kind of like energy where it's mm-hmm. like, it's like wacky, it's like fun, but it also can be very serious. But it's yeah, like yeah. the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, not the super old, mm-hmm. <laughs> not the old, old <laughs> ones, but like the ones in that PS2 kind of era. These like, mm-hmm. I don't know, cartoon properties that turn into kind of like um, games, but it's just also the platforming stuff. It's like you're Mm -hmm. fighting bosses, you're getting collectibles, you're upgrading your combos. It's such a, to me, that's Mm -hmm. just like what defined the PS2 um, for me. Mm -hmm. And I, and I love it. I love it. Um, I don't know if you're going to agree with this because you're more of the authority on this case, but when I played it, I really felt like I was playing Kingdom Hearts. Um, (laughs) Oh my God. I'm so glad you brought this up. I'm so glad you brought this up. So like, I'm very sensitive to how weapons feel. I think mostly because I play Genshin and there's like five different weapon types in Genshin. And the, I don't know what you want to call Chai's weapon. I guess it's like a guitar, but it's kind of like amalgamation of like different metallic bits, right? It has, it's not as heavy as like a great sword, but it's not as light as a sword. So it feels really nice when you hit, when you do combos and you do attacks, it has a good heft to it. And that's what makes smashing people around really fun. Um, like I, I love like hitting the boxes, and I get really sad when some of the stuff in the environment isn't doesn't interact like you can't interact yep. with it. There's like some boxes you can smash, some that you can't, right? But when you're smashing at the vending machine, it just feels so therapeutic. And I haven't finished the game, like I'll put it out there, but I don't know if later on there's like some level where it's like in a, like a smash room where you just like go nuts in there. I feel like that would be so much fun to just like smash different boxes and different robots and things like that but i think the like everything from like the aerial combos to being able to sort of like zip line to enemies that really reminded me of how you use sora in, in kingdom hearts yeah i think it's like to your point about the smashing boxes it reminds again ps2 era it's like ratchet and clank yeah. where and they're literally cogs i think you collect yeah. in hi-fi rush so it is very mm-hmm. ratchet and clank-esque or it's just like the bolts but you're breaking boxes and they like magnetize to you as you collect them mm-hmm. but I'm so glad you brought up Kingdom Hearts because I, and you you all know me. If you follow me on Twitter, if you know, like if you've been following my stuff, I love Kingdom Hearts and I think mm-hmm. everything is inspired by Kingdom Hearts in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think it's uh, the thing that got me is that whenever you finish a uh, sequence, like a, mm-hmm. a battle sequence, it slows down 
Oh as you yeah, the just, like, just like the, just, just like Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. It... Just like in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and maybe it doesn't have the white like thing in the level the, up. Doesn't like, have the, yeah, it doesn't have the the mystical aura on it, but it does yeah. have that that fin- that finale that finesse to it. Yeah. Totally, and it also just like the way he's holding the guitar mm-hmm. weapon. It's very much like the Keyblade. So the Keyblade. again, yeah. it, it it's so beautiful. But I, I think there's so much of this game that is inspired by so many other games, and it's like this perfect mm-hmm. amalgamation of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was I guess like I, even things like um, and this might be a stretch but it reminds me a lot of arcane as well or oh, like yeah. league of legends because there's like one of the boss characters looks mm-hmm. so much like vi in arcane the red hair and the red the uh, red jacket oh are you talking about the first boss who where she has she has the massive no. arms no. no but that Different first boss. boss has the two big arms correct thing. correct the two thinking, arm like, things yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Arcane. also arcane and then um <laughs> peppermint's gun is also kind of like her giant uh thing is oh, kind of rocket. like yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of like jinx's you know mm-hmm. ultimate um mm-hmm. And again, like I'm not a league person. There's probably other references, and I don't doubt it's a multi-billion dollar franchise. But I just think like Hi-Fi Rush is one of the things that it's such a beautiful game. It's such an addictive game. It really reminds mm-hmm. me of like nostalgia. But it takes inspiration, like even like um, Spider Verse. Like you know how Spider Verse is animated on twos, so like mm-hmm. you get that like slower kind of frame rate kind of like mm-hmm. animation style. Hi-Fi Rush kind of like their cutscenes are animated like in a similar way. Mm-hmm. So it's even like that. It's like oh, they're taking contemporary inspirations but putting in this kind of like nostalgia bucket of things that just work. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, one part of the discussion where I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up is that it is, and I know we've talked about this slightly, and I know internet discourse has come around to this as well, but it also reminds me so much of No Straight Roads, which is a Malaysian Mm -hmm. game that uh, that came out a couple years back by Metronomic. Um, Like the similarities are quite insane, you know? Um, and for those that don't know, No Straight Roads, it's uh, you know, the first title by Metronomic. And Metronomic is a studio founded by some amazing folks, uh, Haas, obviously, um, and uh, basically folks who like came from big AAA studios in Japan, started their own studio here in Malaysia, and then came out with this game. But it's also like a action platformer type game where it's about getting collectibles, upgrading your weapons, but it's also all based around music. Yeah. I think the main thing is that like not in No Street Roads, not everything is based around music and within mm-hmm. its attacks or timing, but it is so ridiculously similar. And I think like there's just a fascinating discourse around it. I think even um um John from uh KKP was interviewing the uh director of Hi-Fi mm-hmm. Rush and trying to understand the similarities. I know they said that it was like uh they were developing at the same time mm-hmm. or you know, they didn't take obviously like inspirations from the game, mm-hmm. but it's just so fascinating to see that two studios made such a similar type of game from a mechanic standpoint, but also from a concept standpoint and like similar, I guess like a story standpoint as well. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just such a, it's such a fascinating one. Have you played, um, have you played No Straight Roads? I haven't played No Straight Roads actually. uh, And I was looking into that, but I did watch um, the trailer with, um, I watched the trailer on stream yesterday. Like some, one of my, one of my community members was streaming. And I think because a lot of people are talking about the similarities. It's also bringing some interest around those straight roads, even though it's been out for some time. People, there's like some renewed interest, and I did know that it was something like the plot was something about like killing EDM as a genre and like bringing back rock, which I thought yeah. was really cute. And I think even though both games are about music, they are kind of like focused specifically on like rock music, right? Like Chai mm-hmm. in Hi-Fi Rush, he wants to be a rock star, not just like any kind of music. And the music that plays is in that genre as well. So I do there is there are quite a lot of similarities in that sense, and I think it's cool like to see more and more games sort of be like hybrids of different genres like you've got rhythm games you've got fighting games now you have a rhythm fighting game you know like i love that people are combining these like two different elements um together which is very very cool yeah again i just think it's like i i totally agree with you and um it, it but even to the minute details like even the pairing mechanic is like they came up with very similar stuff right mm-hmm. or some of the ways that you need a platform to get collectibles and again like all this stuff it like makes sense that you know you can come up with these two ideas separately but then mm-hmm. they kind of end up being in the same way but it just gets me really excited because yeah I, it's one of those scenarios that like uh, i saw somebody tweet at like no straight roads walk so that i five rush could run <laughs> kind of a scenario but it's like this beautiful thing in game development where like you said this genre of game is something that i'm so fascinated by and I'm so happy for both teams, but it also like gets me super excited now with like the success of Hi-Fi Rush because again, No Straight Roads I think was a phenomenally received Southeast Asian based mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm super excited to see like with the success of Hi-Fi Rush now, what does that do to like a potential sequel to No Straight mm-hmm. Roads? You know, like mm-hmm. what does the team kind of learn from this, or what do both both these teams learn from each other, or how does this genre as like a music action rhythm game platformer kind of go right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah so i'm just uh, i'm this is such a weird fascinating genre um and mm -hmm. it's crazy that we have two games that are like very similar to each other attempting to like operate in the space mm -hmm. um but it's just it's just so crazy <laughs> like and, and both games are more. so fun so it's like i can't yeah. wait to see what else is there yeah i'd love genre. to see more in this space i mean like i think the last few years we've had a lot of like cozy games a lot of, like farming sim games and then like yeah. all the roguelikes so who knows maybe like rhythm slash fighting or rhythm slash something else could be you know something that comes up after after all of this absolutely yeah. the the only other thing to mention is that you know i'm a big cat guy Yes. And I think, and I'm gonna say, and this might this might be a bold statement here. Mm -hmm. I think Hi-Fi Rush might be the best depiction of a cat in a video game that I've ever seen. And granted, I, I have 808 not. 808 is the best cat. 808 is all... the best cat in all video games. That is, and that I, is I don't a really think you should count. I don't think you should count Stray because Stray is Stray. all about the cat. cat. You know what I mean? So it's like obviously that's like the best cat in video games. But like mm -hmm. the best like cat that exists in the world. Yeah, I the think best cat that exists in the world is 808. <laughs> it's, it's 808. I mean, come on. Like, the way that the they do the animation for the cat, mm -hmm. or like, the way that it exists, and for those that don't know the game, basically 808 is, like, this robotic cat that mm -hmm. um, transforms into a little thing that shows you what beat you're on throughout the mm -hmm. game. But also, like, in cut scenes or in transition scenes, it's just, like, I don't know, the way the cat's, like, licking itself or the cat, like, moves around mm -hmm. or it's just, like, chilling or... I just... I think Morgana, 808... What other cats are there in video games? <laughs> like the billion cats in the space for the unbound. <laughs> okay, but that's not like, you know. I think Admiral I, from a space for the unbound, you know? I mean, I think cats? that like cats I don't like it's almost like what took everyone so long to realize that we're all obsessed with cats. Like cats <laughs> are such great additions to any video game, like being able to pet it and then making it cute means you can make merch out of it. Like it's just it, like having an like a cute animal as a as a mascot for any game is like it just it just adds like another dimension to it. it just makes people love your game um like i don't know like other cats in games it's a good one see hard one 808 is the winner Anyways, there should be a game default, no category at the game awards which is like best cat in video game. after stray I think success they did yeah. someone did a comparison about like the number of cats in games and the number of dogs in games and like there was so way more cats in games than dogs no dude can you pet the dog is like articulates that dogs are so much more popular in a video game. No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up and we'll we'll put it we'll put it in the in the episode. But I definitely saw someone talk about like comparing games of cats versus games of dogs. Oh. I've got I've got a screen rant article that I'm I'm reading right now. Mm -hmm. Cat Cat Sith from seven, Final Fantasy Seven. Is Cat Sith is Cat Sith the cat? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Yes, it's a cat. <laughs> Meow, uh, Meowth Meowth is from a cat. Yeah, yeah, he's a cat. You know what? As an, uh, that's not on this list, but it's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Biggs the cat from Sonic the Hedgehog. Is that his name? Is a cat in Sonic? Aren't they all hedgehogs? They are not all hedgehogs. Are you kidding me? Sonia is Knuckles is, a hedgehog? Not, is Tails I don't know what, I don't know what Knuckles is, man. Big the cat. He's to... like this giant purple cat in Sonic uh, the Hedgehog. What is Knuckles supposed to be? Sorry. An like, echidna. I... Knuckles the echidna. He's an echidna. It's that's this thing. It's Knuckles the echidna. I know. Okay, Tails is a fox. I, I remember that now. Yeah. I guess. I just thought Knuckles was weird. I thought he was a clown. Knuckles was a clown. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um... last last notes on my side for Hi Fi mm -hmm. Rush is, <laughs> I I I again I think like super like major props to this team for making making this game it is so mm -hmm. weirdly fun and I, I think i'm having a lot of fun conversations around it i still i'm at the last like two bosses i think i'm at the last like segments of the game mm -hmm. um but i'm just so happy that this game was shadow dropped like can we talk about that for a second it was like mm -hmm. out of nowhere this game is just like hey it's available later today and i feel like the last time that happened was another with another major property was another bethesda um property which was fallout mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken did they do that for fallout no I, no, I'm thinking of something completely different. I'm not sure. No, I'm thinking of com something completely. They did Fallout Shelter that was a shadow drop, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, never mind. I'm just I'm eating my words completely now. Um, now that I, I'm remembering, I think this. shadow dropping is it's interesting, but like I, I've seen two sides of the argument, and obviously I'm not close enough to the developer side to really make to form my own opinion. But what I've seen on the internet is like some some people saying like, oh, you should do more of these things where you can just drop it, you know, the way like Beyonce would drop an album. But then there's a lot of like indie developers. Like I think I saw oh, yeah. Vlad saying like uh, oh, yeah. no, because like if you're not Beyonce, if you just shadow drop your album, no one's listening to it. So I think it really depends 
um, what kind of game, what kind of budget, what kind of demographic, but it is cool to have a game be available right now because it's, it's such a nice surprise that something you're not waiting for in anticipation for months and dealing with delays and things like that like it's here it's here so i think it is very cool but it probably isn't something that works for like every every game yeah i totally agree i think i've seen that discourse on the indie side mm -hmm. as well where it doesn't make sense but if you're like a gigantic yeah uh company with like established track record i think it yeah it's a cool thing but it's like it's kind of this the first big game of the year in my opinion it's like take that's taking the world by storm mm -hmm. outside of like the indie indie side which is probably mm -hmm. a space for the unbound yeah um, and again i just like major thanks to bethesda for kind of like sharing that opportunity with us to play the game yeah um, absolutely but I, all i can say is like if you love just fun like action platform uh platformer type games or music in general like play that but also on mm -hmm. another end like you said before you know it's like for those that like this game like try out no straight roads mm -hmm. like it is a different experience i think overall but it is very similar in a way where i feel like it's i just so hope more people will go also go back to play no straight roads because this genre is such a fascinating genre yeah um, of games that are popping really. up uh, and support some southeast asian devs alongside the amazing folks at uh tango tango gamers yeah absolutely no, great game. Definitely, definitely recommend it. Super fun. A bit challenging to stream, though. I will, find, I will say. Because uh, you're multitasking the yeah. rhythm of like one, two, four. You know, I find myself I mean, counting a lot to myself, like on some of the parries. I was like, one, two, <laughs> three, four, five. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, just quickly talking about my streaming experience because yeah. I was talking to chat, playing an entirely new game. Um, it the I didn't do my setup properly, so it wasn't responding to my controller. So I was playing keyboard and mouse for the first, like basically the first time ever, because I I don't keyboard and mouse with my games, and like there's a bit where it's like a side, like where the game turns into like side scrolling, and you're just going left and right and jumping, and you have to jump. There's like fire coming out or something, or your platform falls, and you've got to jump dash. Like it's it's quite a complex movement, and I'm like sitting here with my keyboard, being like, all right, W A S D, okay like two hands on my keyboard like double jump okay dash and i i died i think eight times just in that section because i couldn't i just couldn't get past it and then yeah there's the beat and then there's like talking to chat it's like it's a whole lot but i like that at the end of my stream i felt really energized because this is not a cozy game this is very much a, a high intensity really fun <laughs> you're like in the club kind of thing so when you finish it you're like i felt really energized mm -hmm. um which is very different to other games where you know it's a bit more chill so it, it serves a different it serves a different purpose i really have fun i'll yeah. probably i will finish it for sure i think so as well and that's like yeah. such a tough one in this day and age where you get through games and you're kind of like ah, i think i'll like i'm so committed to finishing this game i love, I love yeah. it so much absolutely Great game. <laughs> <laughs> Great game. Um, all right, so I have been proposing this um, on stream and off stream for quite a while now. So I'm really glad we're going to get to do this, but I think I've also shot myself in the foot, which I will explain shortly. But um, we're going to do our Pokemon uh, three by three, basically our top nine favorite Pokemon, right? We're going to chat about our favorites. Sure. Sure. You, I mean, you, you've you been prepared. You've actually played a lot of the Pokemon games. Yeah, I think, and I know you brought this up, uh, I think uh, off recording, but it's funny that we're yeah. talking about both Pokemon and Digimon, but you guys know the 20, um, the 20M podcast <laughs> at this point. We have amazing guests like Jun Shen from Xbox. We'll have some amazing guests of the future. We talk about some serious stuff. We talk about mm -hmm. reviews, whether it be Hi-Fi Rush or um, A Space for the Unbound. But sometimes me and Reno just want to like, you know, stoke the flames a little bit. We want to see where each other's... <laughs> uh moral values are as we discussed <laughs> earlier where our differences are where similarities are mm -hmm. but also like well you know what's a podcast without talking about some of our favorite pokemon and establishing it and cementing it on the internet right i i mean i don't i don't have any issues with that it was more that like when i heard we were going to do digimon and pokemon in the same episode i felt like we were wearing nike and adidas in the same outfit and like that's not that's supposedly not what people do <laughs> i don't, I don't have an issue with that i don't have an issue with that <laughs> I, I, I've done it. Before. I think I did it today when I went to the gym, but like I noticed it. I was like, oh, wow, I've got Nike, Nike, and then I've got an Adidas sweater on. Um, okay. It's destined now, Digi destined, if you will. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So we said we will talk about nine of our favorite Pokemon. Um, okay. You, you prepared. Uh, I prepared like 10 minutes before we started recording. Um, the catch that I put on both of us, which I really am regretting now, is um, it had to be one from every generation. And you know, I've only played until Ruby and Sapphire. The rest is just the rest of the Pokemon that I know are just through like memes, watching playthroughs, and just being on the internet. 
Um, so I don't know how insightful my discussion is going to be, but at least until Jen. 405 I should maybe say something I just I just take over the discussion Jen 4 yeah. and the like onwards I'll just I just go get a I just go get a coffee while you while you're yeah just I just entertain everybody here it's like we'll talk about how Gen 5 actually is a phenomenal story um, all right all right um how do you so want to do this how do you want to do this I think we go one 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 so we'll start with Gen 1 I'll go you go Gen 2 right. you know that that sort of thing and then you can tell me tell me if you're a Pokemon and then why and then if you want to talk about the series in general that that's cool too and this needs to be like cemented. We need to like put this as a poll. It's like these are the best Pokemon in our <laughs> opinion from each generation. Like I don't know. Hands down. I I did my research right before this podcast. So the last few. <laughs> All right. Whatever. So you choose um, the ice cream Pokemon or something. <laughs> hey, I, I um well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know if I want to sign sign off on this as like my ultimate list. Okay. I think it but, is. I think we got to commit. This is the ultimate best Pokemon from every generation list. Okay. I I will. Okay. If if we were doing Gen One, I could talk all day. But since we're doing Gen One tonight, I'm gonna <laughs> get quieter and quieter as we go. All right. Um. So I'll start, or or you can start. You start. Gen One. Who is who is the best Pokemon in Gen One? You see, normally people who know me and rational people would say. Best Gen 1 Pokemon? It's Charizard. No. Right? But, but, contrary to popular belief, I think the best Gen 1 Pokemon is a very underrated one. I think it's Lapras. Oh. Uh, Little, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what is Lapras? The Loch Ness Lapras is, monster? Lapras is so motherly. I love yep. Lapras. She's I think like, the best Gen 1 Pokemon is Lapras. She literally looks like a mom and then like she like ferries people around. Oh, she's adorable. Exactly. I do love Lapras. I actually gift um my niece in Australia. I, I gave her a, a toy Lapras. Oh, like, that's really cute. Where's yeah. my toy Lapras? Well, you're not my niece in Australia. <laughs> I mean, but like I'd appreciate a toy Lapras. <laughs> but I remember my, my my cousin being like, Oh, this is cute, but why Lapras? And I'm like, I don't know, it just felt really motherly. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it just felt like something that would be very comforting to a child. I feel like Lapras is very much like a matriarchal type energy like Pokemon. But you know how like some Pokemon, like obviously there are male and female Pokemon. That's how they breed. But like Lapras is like one of those Pokemon is like, no, they just can only be female. Pe- yeah. purely female. <laughs> Not just female Lapras, but only mother Lapras. Mom, all, all, mom Lapras is... All Lapras are born. Lapras is mom. You know? <laughs> yeah i think like my rationale here is that it's i think it's just an underrated one and i think most of my lists are going to be slightly underrated pokemon because i don't want to choose like the obvious like you know top pokemon of the generation Mm -hmm. but even like in um, red and blue like getting lapras was such a fascinating one because i remember you would see the lapras in the middle of one of the town squares or something like that isn't lapras the is lapras not the icon that appears when you serve yes exactly and it's the icon Yeah, yeah exactly but regardless, Ice Beam takes down the Elite Four. Like from a logistics and an operational standpoint, Lapras is very strong. Logistics and operations. You know, stuff. for like to, to beat the Elite Four. But I just think a very, very underrated Pokemon. So I think overall, it's not Dragonite, it's not Mew, it's not Mewtwo, it's not Charmander. It's I think Lapras is my pick. Okay, okay. What's yours? Um, my pick. Please say Pinsir or something. You know what I mean? It's no, like, everyone's going to know Vanonat. what my pick is. I'm very on brand. Like, it, it's... I know it's super cliche, it's super obvious, but like Pikachu is like my oh my god, all time favorite what? Pokemon. It is. It just what? is. You're like, so basic. This is so. It is. I I just love I just love Pikachu. Like Pikachu is like the thing that reminds me of my childhood. I I have so many Pikachu dolls at home and and where I live here in Japan, my aunt actually like crocheted a Pikachu doll for me and I oh, it's really Pikachu. cute. It's, it's really really cute. I don't know. I I like um Pikachu represents like strong independent people everywhere because like, Pikachu <laughs> won't get inside the It's Pokemon. like horoscopes, you know. <laughs> um I like that I don't know, it's adorable. It does like I, I like Quick Attack. I love the depiction of Double Team in the Pokemon series. Mm, do you remember mm. that do you remember that episode? Yeah, I really like that. And then I think Thunderbolt was probably my favorite um of all of his attacks. Thunder Shock was like too weak, and then Thunder would just like miss a lot for some reason. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt like is the happy medium. Yeah, happy medium. I think that's the one with like the ball in like ball, the yeah. uh, and then it's like there's like electric on the ball itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I <laughs> judge you, but I feel like that is probably the correct answer. The best Gen One Pokemon probably has to be Pikachu. Mm-hmm. I feel Follow. bad for I feel bad for Raichu mains like it just Ooh, became they don't exist. <laughs> It just Those, became so sad. Real. Like the Raichu that Lieutenant Surge had. I mean, he was trying his best. Like, yeah. can't fault him. And he's kind of adorable and orange. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, 
<laughs> the Raichus don't care so much that they just like go on surfing now, you know? Yeah. The, like a lowland Raichus or whatever. Yeah, the lowland Raichus are adorable, aren't they? They're yeah. super cute. They're so happy. They, they're, they're, surfing. Surf, they're surfing on, on, on its own tail, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because the There's Pikachus a... are like the ones that jack all the surfboards. There's like a Pikachu ish type in every generation isn't there the, like pichu is gen 2 pichu, and there was the plus the minus plus all minus, yeah. yeah and then like there's like a there's like the flying DNA. squirrel or something right that looks like pichu ah Pachi, pachirasu yeah uh yeah the dene and then there's um the Mimi- hmm? yeah Mimi- mimikyu. mimikyu yeah i'm trying yeah. to think of the other ones but yes people just love rats what can we say <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, speaking of rats, do you want my, do you want my Gen two pick? Yeah, go go. Not Lugia, not Ho Oh, not Chikorita, the best starter Pokemon not of all Chikorita time. Uh, my Gen two pick of like best Pokemon is uh, Ampharos, Mirit, oh, Fluffy Ampharos, Fluffy uh, Mirit, Fluffy Ampharos. Yeah. Yeah, I just think they're so again. Maybe like my picks are just like underrated Pokemon. Is that I'm realizing now about like my favorite Pokemon in no. this generation? Have you seen? Um, is it Alolan Ampharos? Or the Mega, Mega Empress, yeah, where Mega he's Empress got like a ma- he's got like a massive mane. Oh my god, yeah. he looks so badass. So cool, so cool. I think that's why yeah. I just like uh, to me. I whenever I do a Gen two playthrough, like whether it be Crystal mm-hmm. or um, Hard Gold or whatever, I always make sure I get Mareep, Flaffy, and Empress. I don't like Mareep though. I feel like it, it's like a grind to like. That's I don't like Mareep. I don't like Flaffy. I just like Empress. That's the point. You get but, like, to Empress and you're you so to, happy. Like, I just want like, can't we just shave, shave Mareep and then like, you, get, you just get Empress? You know? Knock off Flaffy. Knock off yeah. Empress. Yeah. Empress at home. Uh, yeah, Empress at home. I don't have too much to say about Empress. I just think strong electric type. I just think like very underrated. To me, it just like mm. makes me feel so safe and warm whenever I have Empress in my party. So I think that's my Gen 2 mm. pick. Well, my favorite type is usually either electric, like electric is my favorite type and followed mm. by grass. So mm. I generally lean towards those um, elements. Do you have a favorite type? No, but it's like we had this activity uh, on stream where we were like trying to figure out what everybody's trainer type, gym mm. trainer type was. I think mine ended up being steel. Like I just love a bunch of steel type Pokemon. Um, you know, like a, s- really? Yeah, like Scizor or like... Just met- metallic Pokemon like mm. Agron and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. um wait, Steelix is Steel type, right? There's an Onyx. Onyx Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they recategorize a bunch of Pokemon. No, yeah, yeah. actually, it's right? a Fairy type Pokemon. Fairy type. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought you'd be like a Fairy gym leader, to be honest. I think that's more. What does that mean? I don't know. Because <laughs> I cry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want Blissey to hug me. <laughs> oh, Blissey, super cute. What's your um, What's your Gen two pick? I kind of was torn between two. So my first, the first one I thought of was a uh, Quilava. Oh, I, great, great pick. I like, I like the, I like the Cyndaquil family, but Quilava yeah. is the, the cool one. He's the one with the, with the yeah. mohawk. Mohawk, yeah. The, the, mo, the mohawk made out of fire and he, his eyes are open. So. Yep. <laughs> um, I think that when I first played through um, Gold, that was my, that was my starter. And then the other one that I couldn't, um, I had, I do have to. You shout can't out pick two. No, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm sticking with Kulava, but honorable okay. mention okay. to Wall Buffett. Wall Buffett. <laughs> Wall Buffett. <laughs> Wall Buffett. Yeah. It's, it's so cute. I don't know what Wall Buffett is. I don't know what it is. He's a he's, he's like a, a Legend of Zelda enemy. You know? He's like a, he's got like a beaver tail, but he's shaped like a teardrop, isn't he? Yeah. And he, he hangs out with Team Rocket, right? Yes. Wow. Wall Buffett. <laughs> Just clip that out, somebody. <laughs> somebody just clip that out. <laughs> Make that a GIF or something. This is adorable. Um, I don't actually know what he does. Does he have an evolution? He does, right? No, he has a baby evolution. What's his baby evolution? Why not? <laughs> why not? Yeah. The little, like, you know? And then a, why not becomes Wobbuffet. She has a, yeah, little thing on her head. You know, like, some Pokemon names don't make sense in English, but in Japanese, they're supposed to be, like, puns. What are they? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You like, told me about this. I, yeah. I don't... So know. like and that one one I, I can't remember all of them, but one I can remember right now is like Farfetch. Um Farfetch is a is a duck with a um, holding a leak. And in Japanese his name is Kamonegi. So Kamo is duck, Negi is leak. But it's a shortened version of a Japanese phrase that's like a stroke of luck or um like something I guess that happens randomly but by chance. 
is a phrase that is like, oh, you spotted a duck holding a leak. That's like something so random and oh. like happenstance. So that's why, so they've, I guess they've just taken that phrase and just created a Pokemon by that. And that's why he's a duck holding a leak. Cause he, so he's Kamanagi. Got and it. I think, yeah. I think that that's story? why he's, he's called Farfetch'd. Like, yeah, that's where he's so that's far-fetched. So random. Yeah, yeah, random happenstance. Yeah, I think that's why he's so far-fetched. Yeah. But yeah, far doesn't make any sense when you look at a duck holding a spring onion. Yeah. But in Japanese, that's why. We need to interview like Jinji Masuda or something like that. Get him on the show and just be like, hey, so when you were creating with these Pokemon, like specifically far Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what does Lapras mean? Lapras. <laughs> mom. Just mom. Mother. just means mom. Mother. Yeah. mother of the sea. Your, before we move on to Gen 3, like Quilava to me is so much nostalgia because I remember the fire spikes in the mm-hmm. back. Like, mm-hmm. because you're, you know, you just see the back of their heads, right? Yeah. And I just love, I just like, that's my childhood, just seeing the fire go up and down. Uh, whenever you attack or something yeah i don't usually go for fire types or for flashy types but i way prefer like cyndaquil kulava to the charmander family sorry wow that's a take charizard is basic charizard is more basic than pikachu that's a take all right gen (laughs) three gen three before i get canceled uh gen three dude this was so tough because this is like and this is totally makes sense for my like age bracket i guess but Mm -hmm. you know it's like what's your favorite gens kind of a scenario mine is definitely gen three even though i grew up like my first pokemon game was the og one like Mm -hmm. red but gen three is so tough for me because i love so many pokemon from it but i have to cop out i have to totally cop out i think it's the two dragon types it's either salamance or flygon and for me it was always flygon When you said dragon types, I was like, Latios and Latias? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the pseudo-legendaries, like yeah. Salamence and Flygon. But to me, it was always Flygon that, always, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. supersedes mm-hmm. that one. It's like, mm-hmm. you get Trap Inch, this little, like, gross dung beetle type, like, mm-hmm. disgusting, ugly-looking. Oh, yeah, I remember Trap Inch. <laughs> and then it evolves into, like, a little, like, leafy bug. Talk about a like, you can just, like, Yeah, but, like, then it's like, you think, like, the, they're just moths, like, uh, mm-hmm. what do they call it? Trap Inch? Vibrava is, like, just, like, get, get out of the light, you know? Like, smack yeah, yeah. them out of the, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it evolves to Flygon, a bug dragon, like, a bug-looking dragon-type bug Pokemon. Dragon. Yeah, I just saw Flygon design, just, type. like... <laughs> Revenge. Viridian Forest Strikes Back. <laughs> so I, I just love Flygon so much. I was like, I was so inspired by Flygon. I love the character design. I love the movement. I love, mm-hmm. I just love that it can use Earthquake and it's also uh, flying, so it like mm-hmm. doesn't get hit by ground type moves. Um, yeah, Flygon's my pick. Love mm-hmm. Flygon. That's a definitive one. I think Gen 3, one of the best Pokemon, Flygon. Hands down. Okay. Um, my favorite from Gen 3 is Cast Form. What? <laughs> why it's so why? okay like it's adorable it's, it's, it's so adorable i don't think anybody has ever <laughs> said that sentence before my favorite pokemon from gen 3 is cast form it's so adorable and then like when it rains it turns into like a water droplet and when it's yeah. sunny it turns into like a little sunshine boy and i just remember gen 3 is the one with the beauty contest right yes yeah, cast with form my is so op at the beauty contest because what's really it, yes I won so many contests with him because he could just transform and, and I think that just was just very appealing to the judge. <laughs> it's like you're a chameleon. Not the chameleon yeah. Pokemon, Kecleon. Yeah. No. But like yeah. What a weird pick. I did not see that coming whatsoever. Casmore. So cute. He's like a little, such a little guy as well. Yeah. I think. I mean, I don't know. Like in the, the his sprite looks like he could be like yeah, 10 yeah. Foot tall, giant. You know? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's the funniest one that you've said so far. It's like it's interesting as well, right? Because I don't, I don't think we had Pokemon like interacting with the elements. Weather, like, yes, weather exactly. Because weather was new. Three. Yeah, weather was new, and he yeah. had that. He could take on shapes. Cool. Absolutely! Wow, what a pick! I'm actually quite proud of you. <laughs> My, do you want me to do Gen Four? Because I think it relates. Yeah, yeah, you go, you go, Gen Four. And I know this is where you tap out. Because you know you don't know any Pokemon. I've, I've, <laughs> hey, I, I know, I know Pokemon, and I have names. <laughs> It, it would be terrible if we didn't mention Gen 4 uh, or any Pokemon within this family of Pokemon mm. as some of the best Pokemon. But I'm mm. going to say Leafeon is uh, the best oh, Pokemon. Oh, the, the Eevee, the Eevee grass type. Yeah, because you go through Gen 1, Gen 2. Gen 2 introduces like Umbreon, Espeon. And then Gen mm. 3, you're like, where the heck are the Eevee illusions? And this is like a Pokemon like uh, 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 like ritual where every generation you got a thousand people like millions of people asking are there new evolutions in this generation yeah. right so they skipped it on gen 3 and then gen 4 comes out and then you're like yeah there is a new like evolution but you can only evolve it near a split near like either a moss stone or like a mm-hmm. glacier stone like mm-hmm. physical locations in gen 4 
Um, and there's something about Leafeon. I just like, it's so beautiful. It's so natural. It's so mystical. Um, I think Leafeon's the perfect kind of like, it defines Gen 4 for me because Gen 4 took a lot of like Gen 1 Pokemon and get got mm-hmm. like evolutions of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they all feel a bit too out of place for me, like mm-hmm. Magmordar or like Electrovire or whatever. But uh, Leafeon is a perfect, perfect uh, amalgamation of the old and the new for me. I think it's quite cool that like, because obviously the Pokemon designs have changed a lot over the years and there's been a lot of like people who like it or hate it. Like it's quite a con- contentious topic. But the evolutions have stayed pretty consistent this whole time, right? Like they they yeah. all look like they are from Eevee's family, which I think is I agree. cool. Yeah. It'd be weird if they didn't. <laughs> no. It's like a third cousin removes that's looking yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Um my favorite from his I'm like, so scared after your cast form, you know? Cast form was legit. I actually played all up right, to that, right. right? So this one, um I I do like Bidoof. Oh my god, why are you like this? He's, I didn't I didn't like Bidoof because Bidoof was like the Ratata of, of this yeah. generation, right? But then I saw this animation that made it really cute. Have you seen? It's like, I, I feel like it's called Bidoof Strikes Back or something. <laughs> and it's like, Bidoof is like trying really hard. I, I, I honestly can't remember the plot, but I just remember me feeling like, oh, like Bidoof, like the unsung hero of this generation. <laughs> Sure. I have no words. I have no words. I think I have a really good friend. Like, mm-hmm. my friend Alyssa also really likes Bidoof. And sometimes she would just send me text messages. I I, I want to pull it up if I'm, but there's just like random Bidoof, like memes Bidoof. and stuff like that. Uh, it's, just... it's such a great name. It's Bidoof. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. so terrified for the rest of my picks. Like, I, have, I have great picks coming right up. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> But like I don't know the Bidoof cry, whereas I can like close my eyes and I can hear instantly Ratata's cry. Do the cry. Kulava one. Do the Kulava one. I don't know the Kulava one. You know what I know? The Zubat one. It's like it's like it sounds like dial up internet. The Zubat one. Da, da, da. Yeah. It's like da, da, da. you know, it's like it's like yeah. really screechy. Like I Zubat. It's more like. Da, da, da. I, I don't want to argue with you on this, so we'll go with that. But I, I know I can hear Zubat's <laughs> Oh, cry. no, you're right. It's like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> but in a more yeah, dial-up yeah, internet yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's those Pokemon where it's like, not you again. It's like, oh my god, get We lost. gotta do a stream where we um, hear the cries and then figure out what Pokemon figure it is. Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. For Gen that. 1 or something. <laughs> yes, please, Gen 1. Yeah. Um, all right, I'll go for the next. Where are we at now? Gen 5? Gen 5. Okay, um, I really like Snivy. Oh, the starter Pokemon? Yeah, the starter Pokemon. Wow, because he's so he's got that. Have you even played Gen 5? I've (laughs) I've played a little bit, I played a little bit. I Uh I had my friend's console, I didn't didn't play the whole thing, but I like Snivy because he looks like he's like he looks so arrogant, like he like by default has his nose in the air. And I don't know if you've seen like the haters gonna hate, um like gif of him or he's like wearing a top yeah, hat yeah 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 and i think he's really cute but i don't like that he like loses his legs like as yeah it's a weird like, one right yeah but you never know like sometimes like that's the thing with starter pokemon like they look a certain way and then they grow up and it's like oh like i don't know if i like you anymore <laughs> <laughs> jeez that's so mean mm-hmm. i i have no i don't really like the starters from um because who were the others we had Snivy. i think it's it's Oshawott. Yeah. Oh, Asha Watts, uh, he's like a seal, a weird clown seal. No, no, no. You're thinking of um, uh, not Primavera Festival. <laughs> but, uh, but Asha Watts is the one where the in the middle one looks like he's wearing pants, right? He's like Yeah, movie. I think so. I think I had him in Pokemon yeah. Go. Samurats is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he turns into like a, a he does turn into a seal. His like final form is is like yeah. a big dude. Like a harpoon face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like Ikakumon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. We got to do the Digimon. Well, of course, we got to bring Digimon back. Anyway. I, I don't like my answer for Gen 5, to be honest with you. Who is um, it? I, I just put Haxorus, because I, I don't like a lot of the Gen 5 Pokemon as much. Like, maybe mm-hmm. the Zebra. Like, what, Zebramon or whatever the heck that, that mm-hmm. one is. But I just put, like, Haxorus, because I think Haxorus is a superior Tyranitar. Like... Wow. I lo- as much as people love Larvitar, I think I prefer Axew so much more. I think it's a okay. cooler, green kind of like dragon. But I, it's a cop out. I don't really like my answer that way. So I want to okay. move on. <laughs> All right, next one, next one. 
Um, what are your thoughts on uh, Batman? Batman, hmm. the animated series, the DC, sure. the DC yeah. superhero. Yeah, he's all right. Well, well if you love Batman, everybody, you're gonna love this beautiful Pokemon <laughs> called Noibat. <laughs> Noibat. Noibat. Why? Wait, what does it have to do with Batman? Is he? It's like, a bat. It's is he, a, I was yeah, but so is, is he Zubat? Like, yeah, but Noibat gives more of a Batman. What kind of segue was Batman. that? Like, what does it have to do know. with the healing? Mean, it's a podcast. We're he trying to figure things to out. It's like, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just think the Noibat is like. Every time I Noibat is in the game, I try to make sure Noibat is in my party. If I really liked Batman, I would be so angry at this segue. <laughs> <laughs> you know the seminal Frank Miller comic, The Dark Knight Returns? <laughs> really reminds me of Noibat the Pokemon. <laughs> okay, I mean, like, it's kind of cute, and I feel like the design has... It's really cute. But Don't, it's really cute. Is it better than Zubat, though? Oh, 100%. Are you kidding me? Zubat can go to hell. Zubat is like an actual bat. Noibat looks to. Noibat looks like it's looks a like detective. A... Yeah. <laughs> I want okay. somebody to draw like Noibat. Detective Noibat. Yeah, Detective Noibat, and do that as a comic cover. I think it has to exist. Why is he called Noibat? Is he noisy? Uh, because I think it's about the noise that like it picks up on its ears. Okay. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um. I don't know. I don't know why it's called noise that. So my my Gen Six pick, yeah, um, is Klefki the the cage. Wow, the key. Why are you you're such a lame Pokemon? <laughs> Cast Look, form the keychain <laughs> Pokemon. I I really um, so I, I I like like I've expressed before like I stopped around Gen Three Gen Four uh -huh. right, and then the next time I heard about Pokemon like or or these like in animated object inspired sure. Pokemon. So the first one yeah. I heard, which I think is not from Gen 6, but like I heard of like Trubbish. And I was like, yes. I was like, I, I, That's I Gen 5. For, yeah, I was like, are they for real? It's a bag of rubbish. Like, like what? That doesn't make any sense. Like I know yeah. Pokemon doesn't make sense, but like Pokemon, the idea is like, you know, evolution, different monster from animals or from prehistoric times. But like, yeah. what did this bag of rubbish evolve from? Like from my, from <laughs> From the recycling. It's about bin? capitalism, yeah. It's about like hyper industrialization and the, like Pokemon can find you can find life in any part of the world. <laughs> so therefore, the world. even in the tri it's like same thing as Grimer. It's the same concept. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think I think the fact that Trubbish is like an actual like plastic bag, like just, just made it a little bit too difficult to to imagine. Whereas yeah, like Grimer and Makia yeah, that and coughing and all of those. Yeah. Those are like comments about like pollution. Um, but then but then I started thinking about Klefki and I saw Klefki a lot in, in Pokemon Go. I was like, hey, you're you're not so bad. You're you're a keychain. People like keychains and you're a fairy type <laughs> as well. Like I, I don't I, I never thought my keychain uh could be fairy type, but I mean maybe if you add more keys to it, he gets more powerful. I don't know. Klefki I don't know means come at, come at me. Are the tell keys me, its me. limbs, you know what I mean? Like if you like dislodge it or shove it in a you know what I mean? I think Klefki should be like brought over to collab with like Kingdom Hearts, and then like, <laughs> so, like you know, not is like which key you want? I got I got all your keys. I got yeah. all your I got all your Kingdom. I've keys got here. Oblivion. I've got <laughs> like Oathkeeper. I've got yeah, like, all on all on hundred acre woods. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a Klefki. That's favorite. a really good one. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. I'm I'm building a strong team to fight against the Elite Four here, as you can tell. That's Gen Five, right? This Klefki. is Gen Six. Oh, Gen 6. Apparently. I looked this oh, yeah, up yeah, like yeah, yeah, I looked yeah, this up right yeah, before yeah. I was streaming. Because Noiba, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, now we're at Gen 7. I want Where's you to it? go with Gen 7 because I want to hear yours. Um, we already mentioned it, but my Gen 7 is Mimikyu. Of course. Because it's because it's 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 like it's it's a Pokemon that wants to be Pikachu, right? So yep. you it's it's like something I It's all of us. It's all it's all. It's like kind of creepy but cute at the same time. What is it? Is it electric ghost type? I think it's just ghost type. Just ghost type? Yeah. I I'm looking it up. <laughs> I like, I mean, there are a couple of Pokemon. I mean, Pokemon for the most part is pretty like... Yeah. Ghost fairy type. Ghost fairy type, okay. Pokemon for the most part is very, G like, you know, family friendly, kid friendly. But there's a couple of Pokemon that kind of like dance along that border of like, this is getting kind of weird. And things like, like Cubone who's wearing like this, his mother's yeah. skull on his head. You got Mimikyu who's like, you know, got like some kind of like personality disorder. And I like I like some of the Pokemon with which have like a bit of like an air of darkness to them. So yeah, yeah 
right, I think just while we're on that note, do you remember the Drift Loon story? Is that the one where they steal children? Yeah. Yeah, I think that that was what um, sparked a lot of people being like, you should read the Pokedex about the Pokemon that you've got because some yeah. of them are like weird. Yeah, I think they also did a side quest in that in RC and uh, yeah, Legends Arceus. Oh, it was an actual thing where he was the the, the Drifling was stealing children. Yeah, the Drifling was playing with a kid in the nighttime or something. The kid just went missing or whatever. Uh, it's quite interesting. That it's is cool quite cool. But on Mimikyu, I I really hope I can find this video. But there's that video of like you know Pikachu, you know the large like Pikachu and EVs that are like life size yeah, or they're just like they giant the, the, the dances, right? yeah, yeah, yeah they I've do the dances them. there's one where i think there's just like a whole there's like 20 pikachu that walk by and at the tail end there's like a mimikyu that's like oh my rolling. God. It's the cutest <laughs> thing ever that is adorable that is adorable if, if i was yeah. a pokemon i would want to be pikachu too i would be a <laughs> I, I i must admit am i what is this gen 7 yeah, my gen, gen 7 pokemon is like so I don't know. I feel like, again, it's like just cool Pokemon for me is like Silvali. And it's like this Pokemon that's like engineered in a lab. So kind of like Mewtwo. But the whole mechanic around it is that it is a normal type. It can be any type of Pokemon. Because you put like basically like LED, uh, LCD discs. I don't know. I don't know LCD, what the hell. VCD, I don't know. What's DCD. LCD. <laughs> LCD screen. <laughs> LED screen. Mm-hmm. But like these discs onto the Pokemon. Kind of like Arceus. That like it changes the type of the Pokemon. Uh-huh. Um, and it's just like a weird one because it reminds me so much of a Digimon in a way where it's like it is a mm. just a mix like it is literally an engineered uh-huh. stitched together Pokemon. I just think that like concept is so cool. That is um, cool. I'm looking it up now. It, it looks it looks like a knight. Yeah, like it looks yeah. like it's like it's wearing like a knight helmet. It's almost got like a Vaporeon tail and like you know just yeah like, yeah. I really like this Pokemon. Yeah, you you've got like some serious Pokemon choices, and I'm just like, oh, I know, I like the keychain. And the but one here that I'll throw, I'll, I'll throw my next one, which is we're getting to the Sword and Shield era, the last yeah. like two generations. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna flip it over. My favorite Pokemon from Sword and Shield is a little 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 tiny little little tiny Pokemon. Is it Sobble? Called Applin. Oh, it's not Sobble. Oh, Applin's the Apple Pokemon, right? Yeah, it's just a little apple dragon type Pokemon. <laughs> it's dragon type. And I think it's hilarious because the evolutions are also like, it's like one of the evolutions, um, it's either Fapple or Apple Fa- Tune. It's, it's called Fapple. Flapple, Flapple. Flapple. Um, apple Tune, I think, is the evolution. It's basically like a baked apple pie. Look at that. Captain up. Pokemon. A- a- apple Tune. Apple Tune. Yeah. It's it's just so it's so funny it's so cute I just love this like and the, I love that they're all dragon type Pokemon as well. Oh, that is cute. Oh, he is he is like a baked apple yeah. pie. Baked apple pie. That is, he looks really delicious. Yeah, I love I love I love Sword and Shield. Oh, it's cute. It's really cute. I didn't like the the look of the legendaries in Sword and Shield. Like it's it's literally a, a sword and a shield. sword and shield. What's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> I didn't like that. I think they're pretty cool. Oh, Appleton's adorable. Okay. Okay, good choice. That's a good choice. Good choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mine mine is Sobble. <laughs> Yours is Sobble. Yeah. I, I really Sobble vi- with my starter Pokemon. Starter, I really starter. vibe with that, uh the, the depression type Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> the poke it until it cries Pokemon. Why does it look so sad? And then they actually name it Sobble because yeah. it's sobbing. I'm like, guy can't get a dub at all. Uh, I think Sobble was. I think I laughed so much when Sobble was. When like, Sobble came out. Yeah. And then next to Sobble was like that hyperactive rabbit, right? Score yeah, bunny? yeah, Score Bunny. Yeah. Score and then uh, forget forgettable grass Grookey? type. Grookey. Grookey. Oh, that... the monkey. Is it yeah. monkey? Grookey? Is it Grookey? Grookey. Wow. Yeah, Grookey. Yeah. The monkey, the drummer. Okay. Yep. All right, we're at the last generation now. I, this is my favorite one because I fell in love with uh, Scarlet Violet and I wish we could have done a review of Scarlet Violet like, but we didn't have the podcast then. Mm-hmm. But it's my favorite generation in a long time and I have, like, this is probably one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. This is a Pokemon I found 10 minutes ago. <laughs> all right, why don't you go with yours then? <laughs> I really like Fido. Huh? Fido? Oh, the, the, the flipping dog. Pokemon. The dog with the bagel for the ears. I'm like, this yeah. is so putty. It's so cute. His name is, it's because Fido is like a generic dog name, but it's Fido. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> he has yeah. bagels for ears and then he evolves into Dash Bun. 
yeah, yeah. Like, what does that mean in German? Like the bun or something? No, I think it's like a pun on a d- so a dashen, dashen. Dashen. Yeah, yeah, but it's and then it's got like like I think it's um what are they called? Not bagels. Um, shallots. Oh yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know what I'm talking about, right? Shallots, the the, re- yeah. the really brown, the brown, really yep. yummy bread. Kind of like kind of soft, kind of like a uh brioche but not yeah you, you buy them at places where you can get bagels as well and i was like yeah, that's yeah. so cute uh, i i think i like um these like food pokemon <laughs> like the apple pie and then the and the, and the bagel dog <laughs> i'm just laughing so much i'm imagining you in a real life like dash bun pokemon just like you're hanging out with the dog so much because it looks like a piece of bread when, when i get when i get a dog i'm gonna get two bagels and i'm just gonna put it like here's <laughs> your, your dog sandwich <laughs> Oh man, that's a good that's a good pick. That's a good pick. All right, what's your pick? Uh, my pick is Tinkatuff. Took the internet by storm, and the internet me as well. Yeah, Tinkatuff is this fairy type Pokemon, and it basically it starts Jigglypuff? with. Oh no, it's not. No, it's like it starts with this oh like tiny little like this tiny fairy type Pokemon with a little small little like small little like hammer yeah. sad excuse for a hammer mm-hmm. then it evolves it's like middle evolution and then it has like a little bit bigger of a hammer it's got mm-hmm. some bigger hair and then take it off is just this like gorgeous boss ass <laughs> like pokemon wow. where it has a uh, oh sorry <laughs> no not take it off um what's the larger uh, uh, evolution um, um tink it hold on tink uh tink <laughs> what's tinkaton 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 I think that Tink- might be. There's, I've got Tinkatuff and then Tinkaton. Yeah, yeah, the the larger evolution. That's what I'm talking about. So like Tinkaton. the one with the giant hammer. The giant hammer. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's She's kind of cute. She looks like a like a troll doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> but it's like you know the lore is that they and I, somebody correct me here, but they basically they hate Corviknights, which is the uh, generation before, which is like the steel metallic mm-hmm. like crow. Mm-hmm. They hate that Pokemon so much that they like use the Corviknight armor to make its like the giant hammers. hammer yeah and i think that's oh, just that's... the coolest shit ever and there's so many memes out there there's wow. so many like renditions of this like tiny little fairy type i'm just like smashing this bird down to so like this... make its like hammer even larger so this tiny little pokemon like has like blacksmith Vicious. capabilities yeah. to build its own hammer out of it's the got vendettas <laughs> crow that's pretty Absolutely. badass that's pretty badass it's cute i like it yeah. Absolutely. And it's fairy yeah. type, I guess. And it's fairy type. And it's fairy okay. type. I love Tinkaton so much. <laughs> Feels like that should have its own like Disney Channel show. Like like the Tinkatons. <laughs> like the like the Tinkatons and they all live like in the colony of like pink little humans. Yeah, it's like Smurfs. <laughs> like Smurfs, yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm really glad you didn't say something like Wiglet or something. Like <laughs> Is that a Diglet type? Yeah, but it's like a a different it's a new Diglet. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see new. You don't. I've seen I've seen enough like cursed Diglett photos yeah. on the internet. Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah. That was fun. I feel like we need to like immortalize this. We need to tweet this out. We need to like you know, what's everybody? What did everybody think of our list? I feel like that was a pretty good list of all time. Yeah, yeah. Cast amazing, form. amazing. Cast form is underrated. Okay, <laughs> I actually played that generation, so it wasn't a cop out. It's genuinely I love cast form. Uh huh. Uh huh. I love cast form. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. But also like psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Um. What else? What else is on our list? I think um. You wanted to talk a bit about Game Boy games. Yeah, I think, I think that, I, not too much. I just think it's like really exciting that Game Boy launched on Switch. Game mm-hmm, Boy, Game Boy Advance. It came out on Nintendo Direct recently, right? Yeah. Did they mention and that? um. It's just I mean, we've talked about it. it's just so much nostalgia. It's like yeah. I want to play Game Boy games, and then when you think about Game Boy games, for me, it's just Pokemon. <laughs> like there's barely <laughs> that any other it. Game Boy games that, that I was played. It. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think my game, my childhood with my Game Boy, especially my GBA, was definitely like mm-hmm. Pokemon, and then like Harry Potter, <laughs> like the oh my god Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, like that, like way back then. Did you ever yeah. play that? I played that on like PS One. I played on PS One too, but there was a GBA version as well, and I played that. It was um. I need to look it up. It was, I think, pretty soon. I just remember that like you could throw spells whenever, and then if you threw it at someone, like it would dock points from like like ten <laughs> points from Gryffindor. And I'm like, oh, no. bro, like come on, like I'm just trying. I'm just hanging, having fun. I'm just trying to hang out. <laughs> That's how I make friends. Yeah, that's how we say hello. <laughs> I mean, that's like a funny generation of like games, mm-hmm. right? Where 
Game Boy Advance games. There was so many. I would go to the store and you would see so many like movie or animation movie, movie kind of like yeah. yeah adaptations on Game Boy, and you're like, that can't be a good. Game. They were not good. I think yeah. I think right now seeing so many like Marvel games and stuff come out and they're actually good or they're actually like proper games yeah. is quite fascinating because back then like a movie turning into a game was just a huge like you know money grab for the for the people who made the movie. I feel. Do you remember when they used to intersplice the movie scenes in the yeah, yeah, yeah. games itself? And I'm not talking about Game Boy anymore. But like mm, for me, it was... I feel like I've said this story, but definitely not on the podcast. But mm. I watched Revenge of the Sith before it came out. Because it was in the, in the game. You, you watched it in the game. Yeah, like the game had all of like episode three mm-hmm. in it. So when I was playing the Star Wars game, I just knew every line. Wow. Um, so by the time we watched the movie, it was like, I, knew, I know this movie. Which is such a terrible way to consume Star Wars, but I was a kid, so it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they don't do that anymore, and God bless. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, nostalgia is always like a strong factor, and I think that's always going to be a case for people remaking games. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to sit here until Final Fantasy VIII gets a real (laughs) remake. I can't believe you brought that up. I want to know, I really want to source this from the crowd, though. I'm moving on from Final Fantasy VIII for the record. Um, I, I want to know, what's every, like, what is everybody's Game Boy games that they would recommend? Because I it was just Pokemon for me, and like, um, I don't know, I, I want to re-explore Game Boy. So I've tried um, Link's Awakening a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. So I know it's now on the Switch as well, so I probably mm-hmm. will properly finish that game. I tried Golden Sun a couple months ago on a friend's console. Um, I really want to try that as a Game Boy Advance game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pokemon Pinball. Uh, the advanced version Mm -hmm. was a classic Pokemon TCG obviously but Mm -hmm. like I don't have too many Game Boy and uh, Game Boy Advance recommendations so I want to crowdsource I want to like again tweet at me drop a thing in the comment like what are some seminal Game Boy Game Boy Mm -hmm. Advance games I don't know if you have any Rina um no like I said my Game Boy Color and GBA was mostly just Pokemon like I think my Game Boy DS was when I started to play a lot more like actual Game Boy games but most Mm -hmm. of those games have already been imported like all the Ace Attorney games I played, I think they're already available on various different platforms. Um, I played this one game that I feel like people, I haven't seen anyone talk about it. Uh, it's called Trauma Center. <laughs> it's called... It's called... <laughs> That's a great punchline. Like, called, that is such a great punchline. Just stop. Just stop. You can't even... It's, like, it's, just it's leave about it my li- It's a game of my life. <laughs> no, I think it's called Trauma Center Under the Knife. And it's like... You know, okay, I played a lot of Cooking Mama. Let's start with that. I played a lot of Cooking okay. Mama. Um, okay. Me and my cousins, like, we went on this trip back to Indonesia at this one point. All of us at Game Boy DSs and we were all playing Cooking Mama at the same time. And Trauma Center is like Cooking Mama, but for doctors. So you're operating on people. And the surgery, you're doing, like, you're, you're doing incisions. You're doing, you're, like, stitching them up. You're, like, extracting stuff. So it's, it's like Cooking Mama in terms of, like, you're using tools to, to operate certain things. But I remember um, there was like some kind of virus that was like embedded in a lot of people and you had the special ability to remove that kind of virus and you had to do it in like a very specific pattern. And you're, of course, fighting against the clock because the more mistakes you make, your patient is like slowly like dying. But it's like, hey, not there. No, no, don't stab that and that sort of thing. And then they, like, they eventually die. <laughs> um so i just remember that it, i'm pretty sure it's called trauma center but i kind of want to check this right now okay okay um and i also play a lot of harvest moon but um mm. as you've seen like the they've re remi- i think it's like a remake or a remaster they've done harvest uh well it's now called story of seasons the original friends of mineral town that's on i think most platforms mm-hmm. and then they're coming out this year with story of seasons uh, a wonderful life which is like the second of the harvest moon titles so yeah. it's not really a game. I mean, it is a Game Boy game, but it's already been redone for other platforms. But it's still very exciting. Yeah, I know Carrion and like Tosh, new friends of ours. Like, I just know that they're yeah. Like, Tosh is Harvest Tosh Moon. is heavily, yeah. Tosh playing. Yeah, I bet I'm I a Stardew that. dude, so I, you're I a Stardew that. dude. Yeah. The yeah again for me it's just Pokemon games on the you know even on the advanced like there was that Pokemon the first Pokemon Mystery Dungeon launched mm-hmm. simultaneously on the DS and the advanced but mm-hmm. I see more recommendations friends like give me some Game Boy recommendations yeah 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 drop drop us some recs please do you remember those contraptions on the Game Boy where it's like be like a magnifying glass oh on my lights God. and like and it, I I would have a chunky ass like you know do you thing. do you know like the Man, struggle gaming was hard back back then, then it was like you know because no lights you know 
My so my cousin had a rechargeable battery pack, so he could just charge it. I think he had two, and they would just charge it. But I was using normal batteries, and like every time I had to beg like my grandfather yep. or something, like, "Hey, I'm running out of batteries," and they're like, "You know, batteries are really expensive, and they're like running out. You're playing too much, and you're having to deal with that." <laughs> and then you can't play after a certain time because there's no backlight on the original Game Boy. So I had the the light that show that shown over it. Yep. It was like in the shape of a dog holding a bone. I don't know someone got it for me. <laughs> And then the bone was the light, and it would just hit, like dangle over your your game. And some people yeah had the magnifying glass, so you could mm-hmm. like see better. That was really cool. Um, I don't know, like really funny to have all these like random accessories just to like enhance your like quality of life gaming. Not even like accessories. Remember like when Game Boy Colors used to be in this like fanny pack like scenario? Yeah. Where it's like they would just be giant like you know Velcro clips, mm-hmm. and then you could put a little like one cartridge at the top. And yeah, I remember like my friends had the Pokemon themed ones, and I'd be so jealous of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just like those like giant robust carrying cases for your Game Boys. That's how you know you were like a cool kid, right? You had the yeah. official Pokemon carrying case. Exactly, exactly. I think they lived in Japan, so it was like, mm-hmm. uh, they got it from Japan. I was so, so jealous. I think I just had like a makeshift like sling bag that just happened to fit like a Game Boy nicely and then I just like <laughs> make that into my Game Boy kid. Yeah. yeah. God, yeah. Good, 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 good generation. Good, good generation. generation. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you wanted to talk about something that I'm very unfamiliar with. Not unfamiliar, just like I haven't dabbled with in a long time. Yeah. I talk about to nostalgia. Talk about... For me, but, you know, something contemporary for you. Well, I wanted to talk about manga and, and well, not really anime. I want to talk specifically about the medium of manga because I recently got back into it. So I, I read a lot of webtoons, which we'll, I'll talk about a bit later, but manga, not so much. And I think in the last week, um, I started binging this uh, manga title called A Sign of Affection. And it's really, really sweet. Um, and it just reminded me of why I used to read, love reading manga so much and how I should try and spend more time reading like good quality manga as opposed to just like, I mean, webtoons are great too. There are some really good ones too, but there are some that are just like, I'm just reading it because like, I, want, I don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> I just want to like be entertained on my phone right um but a sign of affection i think i i did tell you about this one before it's it's a shoujo manga so you know more aimed towards like um sort of like romance and like coming of age stories not so much like your fighting your fighting style like your shonen and it's about um your main character her name is yuki she's 19 years old she's like attending college is very slice of life she's just like growing up and at that age where she's trying to get a lot of new experiences which is you know very i think a lot of people can relate to that um, but the thing uh, with Yuki is uh, she's, she's, she was born deaf. So um, that was kind of like what really interested me in the manga. Like I saw someone talk about it on Twitter and they shared a really beautiful sort of panel where the art style was really nice with like tick. The dialogue was really romantic, like tick. And then I read about it on the internet. I was like, how is this artist like communicating deafness in a medium that is so like word heavy? Like how does that get translated? And it's a really beautiful mix of, um, she uses, um, I think it's called shua. So there's like in Japan, there's like two types of um, Japanese like uh, hand signing. So she, she uses like one type of that. She's also able to lip read. And in the manga, they depict that in different colors, which is also really unique because manga oh. only has black and white, right? So I think black text is like proper dialogue. And then gray text is her lip reading what the person is saying. Wow. And then for really long conversations with her and other people, she'll just like write text messages because I think her family doesn't doesn't know how to hand sign. So then the then the dialogue box changes changes uh, design as well to indicate that this is a text message between her and that. And it's it's real it's just really really sweet and it talks a lot about um, the challenges I guess of being deaf, but also not in a way that's like oh poor Yuki. It's more like how does she celebrate life even with um, not being um, able as like other people are and the mangaka I, I need to probably do more research into this but I do remember reading in one of the chapters she talks about her partner in developing the series is someone who is deaf as well so she's drawing from like actual experiences and it's really really sweet like I, I texted you I think on Friday I was like I cried <laughs> it was so sweet Not, nothing sad happened it was just yeah. a really beautiful section where she just talks about like how she wants to live her life and all it's, it's amazing yeah, I think what fascinates me is more so like the depiction of that via manga, right? Because it is a very pun in, like not pun intended, but like obviously it's a very two dimensional type of mm-hmm. um, medium. Mm-hmm. And I know some manga artists are just like god tier level artists sometimes, right? And they just like go crazy, and it's like 
um, insane. But mm -hmm. yeah, the medium for me is like, it's always a bit restricted me because I remember the black and white thing. I obviously got over it as mm -hmm. a kid, but it would mm -hmm. always bother me a little bit. I was like, oh, why isn't there a color? But then the mm -hmm. second thing is like, yeah, it's so, it's like, it's very simple comic books, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and by simple, I mean like, it is just black and mm -hmm. white panel, you're moving on. Um, but yeah, I just, the, that depiction I think is fascinating. I feel like I'd be quite intrigued. Mm -hmm. I think the black and white thing is, is, is a very interesting thing to say. And it kind of get probably depends on like what you grew up with and what your tastes are like. Because something that I, I wasn't planning on talking about, but I was watching Jinji Ito, um, mm. which is a TV series that they just put on Netflix. <laughs> Jinji Ito is a yeah, yeah. artist. But there's like, uh, I can't remember what it's called, Tales, Tales of the... It's a, it's a Jinji Ito series on Netflix. And it's just covering, um, I think themes of insanity i believe because he's produced a lot of different types of work but it's like an animated version of his work and i i thought it was I, honestly like, i thought it was terrible um I, and i've written thusly and the reason for that i feel is like jinji ito's art style is really famous for really contrasting work between black and white and the way that he draws his characters is so strong and it really depicts especially for the horror scenes like when there's like a there's one of his um, most famous work is called Uzumaki which is about spirals that kind of like drive this town into madness and the way that his art style is really um, conveys that sort of insanity because of the how strong the black and white is and when you watch it in anime in the animation form it's in color and everything kind of becomes bland and muted and I think it, I mean that's I guess not really his fault like it's whoever who made it but it just didn't have that shock value anymore so um I, and that was probably like one of the cases where i really felt like the manga like did more justice to what he was trying to communicate than the anime even though anime had much more breadth of you know expression with colors with sound with you know um movement things like that so yeah, yeah. i i can relate as like i feel it's like embarrassing that i haven't consumed any like jinji Iso content but it's scary. I, think, I know you don't like scary yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm just a big scaredy cat. No, but I think it's like there's beauty in something so like horrific, right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's also like very Japanese as a concept. But to me, it's a larger conversation about transposing. Mm -hmm. So I know like Last of Us is something I want to talk about. And we can get into it in the next episode. But, mm -hmm. you know, the like how do you turn a game, like one medium, which is like game into television, right? Yeah. But then to me, it's also like I'm thinking about things like uh, manga to anime. Mm -hmm. Talking about Chainsaw Man. And I know some of mine, it's like, uh, some of the things that I like, uh, or even like Full Metal, it's like what mm -hmm. a phenomenal manga, then turn into an amazing anime. Mm -hmm. So I just think like, I don't know, there's a greater conversation to be had about like, how do you do interpretation, extrapolation, tra mm -hmm. like transposing something. Uh, and mm -hmm. sometimes it works and sometimes it just like horribly fails. Like, I don't know, like even Cowboy Bebop, right? Like, um, oh, it, there was a lot was of- That so there's sad a, when that ended so abruptly. The yeah, that news article- <laughs> last week or the week before right where it was like the main the creator of the show like only saw the first 30 minutes of the first episode or something oh, like that yeah. right? um but mm -hmm. yeah i don't know i don't know there's no conclusion to what i'm saying here but it's like i can see what you're saying where it's like sometimes it just fits in one medium and not yeah. particularly the other mm -hmm. but if you don't like the black and whiteness maybe you should consume some webtoons like <laughs> i'm a big comic book person I, it's not that i don't like the black and whiteness mm -hmm. i just remember as a kid i would like color in the pages i know that's so bad <laughs> It's so bad, but I was like That's, a child. Wow, that is child. like dog marking a, a, a novel, but yeah, worse. Yeah, <laughs> you're, exactly. you're like, hey, like, you're like telling the manga artist, like, hey, I'm going to help you out, buddy. Like, yeah. <laughs> let me do this. And like you. colorist, and I get it. It's so expensive. It's so not worth it. And it's so, it's a completely different art form. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I remember my, my uncle who like studied in Tokyo, he saw me mm -hmm. coloring my, I had a Digimon 03 like mm -hmm. manga or whatever. And I was, I mm -hmm. colored it and he was like, you know, this isn't supposed to be colored. Right? This is not a coloring I book, know. You know. And I was an old, <laughs> enough to recognize that but i was also like i just want some color yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, well i mean i i often get asked about like what exactly like webtoons are and how they're different to like manga so yeah. um i mean like i don't i'm not like an expert i just consume a lot of it um but from what i understand like it's a genre that was popularized out of korea but like south mm -hmm. korea formerly mm -hmm. and it's all just about like digital first sort of like comic comic production with graphic novels um, so like the, the thing with manga is like, you know, the, the way that they're paced is based around like a weekly sort of cadence. And then if you're consuming Japanese um, manga, then you probably get like weekly if you buy like the weekly magazines. If you're consuming overseas, it's like licensing issues about whether it's the English or the German or the French, you know, and like different regions of different like, There's a lot, a lot of complexity on that. But with Webtoons, it's literally just like three or four different apps on your phone. Um, mm -hmm. You get like a, you pay for like a subscription and you can like access it. 
And for some reason, they're all almost like like ninety percent of the ones I've come across are like in, all in color, um, which I feel like is a lot of work that they've done. And um, yeah, it's it's I think it's really cool because it's making this medium very accessible. And a lot of these apps, I guess, um, they do like the trans uh, translation or you know that sort of stuff, so people are able to see what more manhua, which is the Korean word for manga, like more of that that's coming out in in English. So. It makes it a lot more accessible, and I also think that the way that people are consuming it, like me, they're just like binging it for like hours mm. in a day, means like the pacing of the story and the plots are very different. So I only noticed that when I started reading um, a sign of affection recently, I was like, hey, this is a very different pace to uh, webtoons because webtoons seem to go like a lot faster. They're kind of like it kind of fits like this generation of like very like ADHD or like <laughs> lack of attention sort of like, like generation. Like bubblegum right? pop kind of a scenario. Yeah. So it's like stuff is happening every episode. If it's like a spicy romance one, it's always focused on the couple. There's not as much world building. It's very, it's a little, mm. some of it can be really good. Some of it is a bit two dimensional. Um, but compared to manga, that, that to, compared to the manga I just read recently, very much like slow, deliberate sort of building of characters and their relationships. So yeah, it's just very different. Yeah, I agree. I want to. I want to get back into it. I want to read more. Um, mm -hmm. Not that I don't read, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read? No, I just I haven't read manga. Words. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't read manga in forever, and so mm. it's like I, I really miss that medium. I remember I miss like flipping through, like my card captor or like Tsubasa Chronicle, like mm. manga or whatever. But yeah, I, I will. I will. Yeah, we'll get into that. All right, I think we covered a lot this this episode. We talked about Digimon and Pokemon. <laughs> talked about Hi Fi Rush and manga and webtoons. Kind of talked so about much. Game Boy. It was probably our <laughs> pack. Talked about Adam Sandler. Yeah, Adam Sandler <laughs> movies. That was unintended, but it, I'm so glad we thought we spent 30 minutes on an Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. <laughs> Love you, man. Hope you're watching the podcast. <laughs> Sandman, please come on the podcast. You know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, no, this was a really fun one. I, mm. I really appreciate this. Uh, yeah, get, what was the what were some of the calls to action? What's your favorite Adam Sandler movie? Let us know, and it can't be Click because that's impossible because <laughs> Reno's the only person. Um, give us some Game Boy recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, Roast uh, our Pokemon top nine per generation. Well, what are your top nine? Po <laughs> yeah, top, is it even nine? Is ten generation? No, nine generations. We did nine. Right. No, You're nine. right, nine generations. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly nine. God, what a good episode. This was a fun one. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Make sure to check out our podcast on all of our platforms. Links are all down below. Um, and our personal links are down there too. So stay in touch. I was going to bring up, I don't know how to end the podcast. I feel like the ending segments should always be something like really funny mm -hmm. and off topic. But it'd be super funny if I was like, I hate Digimon. You know, like I've just been going along. I've always, I've always just said that I liked it just to like appease you so that we can have like a working friendship. Yeah, but like, yeah. what if I was like, I hate Digimon so much. I think it's a Pokemon knockoff. Also, can we talk about Pikachu is your favorite Pokemon? Really? Pikachu is, is your Pikachu favorite? Is God, Pokemon. that's what? such a bad answer. No, that's Pikachu such is a great. Bad answer. How can anyone that's not like so, Pikachu? such a cop out answer. Everyone's favorite Pokemon is Pikachu and then their second favorite Pokemon is the one they talk about. I goodbye. Have to... Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of the podcast. Yeah, the end ever. We never make an episode. Uh, yeah. <laughs>